All right, what is up everyone? OJ over here from Player Essence and welcome to Player Essence Cross Nintendo. We got episode number 139 for you guys. Uh, we are cranking these out, man. I don't think I've missed a Player Essence Cross Nintendo in a while. Um, it's just been an interesting week this week, man. There's been a lot of stuff going on uh, with the community, a lot of stuff going on. We had some debates, which we'll talk about the second debate that we're supposed to do. I heard a lot of you guys talk about, where was the second debate at? We heard, um, I'll, I'll, I'll address that. Um, we had uh, a lot of announcements, too. There was actually a number of announcements that came about. Uh, even like today and yesterday, uh, we got a release date for No More Heroes. Um, uh, Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. That's coming out early uh, January 18th. 2019 so that got pushed back just a bit it was supposed to come out fall or winter 2018 so it got pushed back just a bit uh which is still technically i guess fall or, or winter winter it's still technically winter but they never really had a release date outside of 2018 so uh or maybe q4 or something like that so uh they got pushed back just a bit so we'll talk about that if it's a big deal or not or whatever it is like uh we'll discuss that and of course you guys' user questions uh feedback uh all sorts of stuff. So if you have random questions that are not based on like any of the actual talking points, we'll get to that. Uh, but I do want to get my shout outs in. We do got 80 people plus in here. So shout outs to everybody who's here. And uh, let's go in and let's get some uh, shout outs uh, starting off here. So um, let's see here. Uh, Goddess of Beauty, what's good? How's it going? Uh, shout outs to Sean Diamond. Elite Ninja Sean Diamond is here. What's good? Zema Duvant. Elite Ninja Zema Duvant. Let me check your badge real quick, man. All right, uh, three more months, Zemma, until you get your new badge. Sean Diamond, two more months until you get your new badge. Shoutouts, thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nero, what's good? How's it going, man? Ethan R, how's it going? Switch to PC. Mark, my boy, how's it going? Mark, you are really close. Two months until you get your new badge. Thank you for the uh, long-term support, man. Appreciate that. Um, let's see here. Uh, J2Blue, what's good? John Shepard, how's it going? Um, MP6 channel, I haven't seen your name here, so how's it going, man? Um, well, we could talk about Bandai Namco's port begging strategy. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit, I guess. Or we can talk about that in the Q&A section, but we'll get around to it. Or if I get ticked off randomly, I'll, I'll mention it. Um, <laughs> shout outs to NR Merit. What's good? How's it going, Elite Ninja NR Merit? Uh, definitely three more months till you get your new badge, man. Thank you for the support, homie. Um, let's see here. Alonzo Vines. What's good, man? How's it going? Um, let me have my Twitch chat up, too, so I can say what's up to the Twitch boys. Uh, shout out to the Twitch boys that are here. Let me see how many Twitch boys that we got. Twitch boys and girls, two. All right, there you go. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um, Don G Gaming, what's good? Shout out to leading to Don G Gaming. Uh, three more months till you get your new badge. Thank you for the support, homie. Crit, Crit Astra, what's good? Uh, you enjoyed yesterday's debate. How's life? My life is going good, man. How, how are you doing today? And deba yesterday's debate was fun. It was really good. Um, Boy Z, you're not late. We just started up, man. I'm give still giving out shout outs. Dumb Guy Gaming, how's it going, man? Good to see you here. KJ2399, how's it going, man? Good to see you here, like always. Big Mo, 375, how's it, how's it going, man? El Torres Bay, shout out to Leading to El Torres Bay. Three months, El Torres Bay, you got your new badge. Thank you for the support, homie. Azur Tempest, how's it going, man? Party Man, what's up? What's up, Party Man? How's it going, dude? One more month, Party Man, next month, dude. You'll be good next month. You got a new, brand new badge, so enjoy that. Thank you for the support. I really do appreciate that. Flip Mode, Flip999, what's good? Seven months, about a, yeah, about a, got a, uh, about five more months and you get your new badge, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support, homie. Um, M. Williams, what's good, man? How's it going? How's work been for you, dude? James Clarkson, how's it going, man? How you doing? Uh, let's see here. Big Tasty, what's going up, man? How's it going? What's going up? How's it going? <laughs> uh, Takashi, how's it going, man? Uh, let's see here. Um... Bud Senior, what's good, Bud Senior? You picked up Blade Strangers, it's dope, okay. Yeah, man, I've been seeing some people play uh, Blade Strangers. It looks like a pretty cool game. I need to, maybe, there's just so many games, man. I've been playing Xeno, I gotta go pick up. Uh, we're gonna be having an all-day live stream for uh, for Dragon Quest XI. So I'm gonna be playing that all day on Tuesday. That, that game comes, I thought it came out the following Tuesday, but it comes out this Tuesday. It comes out the 4th, so we're gonna be playing Dragon Quest XI uh, all day on Tuesday. You'll still have videos, so you guys will still have videos, and we'll still have... We'll still have uh, PE Live, but I'll be playing Dragon Quest as soon as Best Buy opens. I'll go get it, and then maybe I'll set up the stream, and I'll play it from like 10-something a.m. my time all the way to like 4 p.m. So I'll be playing it pretty much all day. And then I might do a night stream with it, too, just depending on how I feel, if I'm tired or not. Um, shout out. Stephen Bone, what's good? Um, let's see here. Asan, what's good? Shout out to Elite Ninja Asan. Good to see you here, man. Good to see you here. Bud Senior, one more month to your new badge, dude. Congratulations and thank you. Asan, one more month to your new badge as well. Thank you. Thank you for the support, guys. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the debate in just a bit, J2Blue. Uh, 777AZ, what's good? Matt inside, how's it going, man? 
Good to see you here. Good to see you here. Good to see over 120 people in here. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Get some more new ninja into the village for today, man. Uh, Shinobu, what's good? How's it going, Shinobu? Uh, two more months, Shinobu. I think you're right on track with Mark, man. Two more months, you guys get your new badge that nobody's ever seen before. This is a brand new badge for one-year subscribers. Or sorry, not one-year subscribers. One-year members uh, or sponsors of the channel. So shout-outs, man. Thank you so much, Shinobu, for the long-term support. Uh, two more months and you get your new badge, dude. You guys will like it. It looks cool. If, well, if you like Naruto, you'll like it. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII um, Remake never releasing. Uh, shout outs, dude, for your new badge. You've had it for a month now. Uh, five more months, you get your new badge. How's it going? Um, uh, yeah, well, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a bit, Crit Astro. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, is it Bam Bamulson? What's up, man? How's it going? <laughs> How's it going, man? Hey, if I can be part of your favorite YouTube uh, YouTuber team, I don't care what rank I'm in. Just as long as you're here and you're watching, I can be last place and I'm happy because you don't have to spend your time with me, man. So I don't I don't care where I am on the list. Just as long as I'm you're here. <laughs> so thank you, I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Yeah, man, one more month, bud. One more month, dude. I appreciate the support, homie. One more month. You got your nice uh, Mikey Kisharingan. Um, Let's see here. Um, I can't wait to level up. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll have new badges for 1.5 1.5 in two years as well. So we'll have new badges for that. Um, Rosalina, how's it going? Um, p -p 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 I think Nico Suave, what's up, man? How's it going, dude? Hang 10. Uh, let's see here. Sub-Zero, what's good, man? That Nintendo Essence. Let's go. <laughs> Shout-outs, dude. Shout-outs. Um... Um, let's see here. Watch the language, Ethan, and you won't get your uh, comments deleted. Well, it was actually automatically held for review. So, I mean, certain curse words get get a uh, get a um, the the auto bot does it. Just got to be careful. He didn't do anything bad though. You're not gonna get banned or nothing. Um, I grew up on Taco Bell. You know what? Real quick on Taco Bell, man. Whenever I hear people talk about Taco Bell, they always talk about like you know having explosive diarrhea. Or something along the lines of that, or just having to use the bathroom a lot, or something. But I think the problem with that is, is like, stop getting so much freaking cheese. Like when you go to Taco Bell, there's no need to. Like, you can tell them light cheese. You can tell them don't make a burrito, and the whole it's like 75% cheese. Like you can tell them take off the cheese. You don't even need to eat a lot of cheese. Cheese isn't something that you even need, you know, to eat too much. You can get calcium, and you can get other stuff that's in cheese from other places. So I mean, like. Just tell them no cheese or just tell them really light cheese and you're not going to have that problem. You know, that's the one thing that I notice when people talk about Taco Bell. It's like, wait a minute. When I go to Taco Bell, I never have that issue. Oh, it's because I don't eat all the freaking gooey, nasty cheese that they put on everything. Like, they, they overload it. So, yeah, just relax on the cheese, guys, and you'll be good. Um, Andre Wine. Shout out to Lead Ninja Andre Wine. How's it going, man? New member. Yep. Just joined up. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate the support. Sean Diamond, two more months for you like I talked about here. K-Mac the Great. How's it going? Um, yeah, you shouldn't really eat. I mean, to be honest, I mean, there isn't necessarily anything wrong per se with it. Like, for example, like you can have some chicken, you can have, I mean, there's nothing wrong with like a tortilla, some chicken, some, some shredded lettuce, some uh, pico de gallo. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? The problem is all of the sour cream, all of the sauce, all of the cheese, and then on top of everything else. But if you go there and you're like, okay, let me just get a taco, a chicken taco, or let me go get like a chicken, you know, chalupa or gordita, just like a tortilla with some chicken. Maybe you have a little bit of a, like a, a sauce packet in there, uh, like a mild sauce. Like the problem is all the other stuff. Like you don't need sour cream. Sour cream is useless. It's just a useless thing to add calories. You don't need it. I used to be a type of sour cream type of guy where I put that stuff. You, you don't need sour cream, guys. That's just something that you just don't need to put on your food. Um, so just, yeah, no sour cream, light cheese or no cheese, lettuce, lettuce, the, the pico de gallo or whatever they put on there, the tomatoes and everything, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with Taco Bell. It turns into a, just a normal meal, in my opinion. So, um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's just no need for that. Fake meat? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, never had an issue. Well, I mean, the thing about it is that your stomach probably a lot of people's stomachs get upset with like amount of cheese that they eat. Cheese isn't something that everybody can just eat normally. Um, so that that's the thing. So I mean, you might be okay with it, but lots of other people uh, probably aren't. Um, 
don't have the same reaction to it. But yeah, I actually like I actually really like Taco Bell. I don't eat it a lot anymore, but when I was growing up as a kid, I actually really liked Taco Bell. It was good. Um <laughs> hey, Taco Bell is a good second. <laughs> uh, gaming channel or Taco Bell Diarrhea channel? Uh, gaming channel. All right, guys. So I think we pretty much got everybody here. So let's go ahead and let's get into some of the topics instead of talking about explosive diarrhea from Taco Bell. Um, today, we got some good stuff to go over. And for some reason, it went off my page, so I can't see what's going on here. All right. Okay. So My Hero Wants Justice. So this week we had a, a number of different things. We had the Nindies Direct, or not the Nindies Direct, the Nindies Showcase. We had Oni Musha being announced. But we're going to talk about My Hero Wants Justice because this is the first time that I've seen for one of the bigger Bandai Namco fighting games, whether it be like, a, you know, like a Naruto or a Dragon Ball Z or anything, but pretty much any of the games that have came day and date or near day and date where the Nintendo Switch version actually outsells the PlayStation 4 version. Now, both, both games necessarily didn't like blow up or light up the charts i think the the nintendo switch version sold 24,000 copies plus no digital the uh the playstation 4 version sold 16,000 copies no digital but it's just the thing about what i like from that is that it's good to see because bandai namco is like okay our games and the install base is starting to go so much up that people are starting to actually pick up the switch versions you know, day and date. If it's day and date, look at what happens, you know. So hopefully what this does is that encourages Bandai Namco, of course, going forward, more day and date, which they've been pretty, which they're getting better and better with, uh, with some of their games. This isn't the first day and date Bandai Namco game that we've got from them. So they're getting better with it, but I would hope that this would definitely encourage them to kind of do that a little bit more and just uh, make sure that everything is day and date. Uh, personally, for me, um, I'm one of those guys to where I have my crazy backlog. I have editing to do. I have so much stuff. So, of course, I want day and date. But if it's not, it's like whatever. There's so many other games for me to play. I don't really care. But for everybody else, that's not necessarily the case. Um, not necessarily the case. Um, so I would hope that day and date for uh, for future games. But this is definitely good to see. If you're a Nintendo Switch fan, this is, I mean, not that it's like, okay, yeah, we beat PlayStation 4. It's not about that. It's about the Nintendo Switch version getting a game. The same time as the other system gets a game and it's a good version of the game like i've been watching my dude um man it's so hard for me to say his name i can't dude i can't say his name that great on twitter i gotta spell it out maybe you guys can help me i i, I played smash brothers against him um uh i played smash brothers against him but dude i cannot and do and and do ka yuba and do you ka Ka I'm just gonna call you Kaba. Kaba. My boy Kaba, he was playing it. He's Frieza awesome. He's like a Japanese type of animation, you know, brother streamer like myself. We we're into the Japanese games. He plays like Dragon Ball Z. He's been he's been playing um uh, My Hero One's Justice. Uh he's been playing that. And I've been watching it. He put up a gameplay video uh online and a switch video. And he the game ran so smooth to him, he thought it was in 60 frames per second. Um, I, the other day he tweeted out, he was like, man, like my hero wants justice. It's running smooth on the switch, 60 frames per second. And I'm like, wait, hold up, hold up. I'm just going to call him Kaba because it's a K A and then there's a B. I was like, I was like, hold up Kaba. I was like, dude, the game, bad eye Namco said the game is in 30 frames per second. He said, really? He's like, okay, I'll eat crow if it is, man. But he's like, it's running so good. It runs smooth. It, it, it feels great when, it, when, when I'm playing the game. So apparently it's a quality port, guys. Apparently it's a quality port. A lot of you guys have been asking, like, how does it run on Switch? Apparently it's running pretty good. And he has some gameplay footage up. So make sure you guys check him out. Um, let me go ahead and let me leave a link uh, to his channel so you guys can... Uh, so you guys can check out his channel. It's really high quality. His channel is really good, really high quality. Like I said, he does My Hero um, gameplay. Actually, you know what? No, 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 I don't want to do that because then that would take some views from him. So I don't want to do that. Anyway, I will just link his channel for you guys. Um, he plays Nintendo Switch. He's, he's he, he plays uh, lots of different stuff. So I'll just put it there. You guys can check out his channel when you guys get the opportunity. Um, but no, I don't think it's... In Bandai Namco officially came out and said that this game is in 30 frames per second. The only thing is that the game runs really smooth. The game runs really smooth so he couldn't tell at least just just because he was just into the game just playing he was just still getting used to it so i think that i think once he gets the ps4 version in front of him because i think eventually he'll probably get the ps4 version too you'll probably be able to see like oh yeah like the ps4 version is running at a faster frame rate but he was just saying that it's so smooth he just didn't notice at the beginning i think i think maybe he's noticed now but i talked to him like when he just first got the game so it wasn't like he had a ton of time with the game i think he just got like a couple matches in online and stuff like that so yeah, so it runs at a solid, usually when a game runs at a solid 30 frames per second, 
there's not a problem. The, the problem with some Switch games is that they don't run at solid 30 frames per second. Like, I'm, we're talking like solid 30 never moves off from that 30. When a game runs, and there's no like frame pacing, like frame pacing issues, you know, like where there's like an irregular frame or there's like a hitch here and then it goes right back to 30. When a game runs at a solid 30 and it's like, that's what it is, you know, you usually don't notice it. Now, here's the thing. That's just his opinion. I mean, like somebody else could play the game and be like, oh no, I could, I can feel it. It's kind of different here. So, I mean, that's just a, his opinion, but he's the only person that I know that actually, like, you know, that I follow that actually is covering the game before the western launch because we still have a while for the western launch because we still have to wait more than a month it comes out uh late october late october october 23rd or something like that so so yeah um so yeah you guys can check it out um so yeah it's 30 well yeah the game is 30 frames per second it's definitely 30 frames per second but like what i was saying um you know he thinks it runs so smooth that he didn't really notice uh the difference or anything like that so that's great i mean that's definitely good that's what you want to see you want to make sure that um uh the, the, the game's run good um ethan r says yeah i saw the gameplay it looks awesome on switch yeah it looks good the art style definitely lends to the type of thing that they're doing with switch but i think unreal engine 4 man getting those optimizations for unreal engine 4 i think unreal engine 4 is probably proving to be the best engine for third-party developers to use especially if you're making a switch game i mean unreal engine if your game's already running on unreal engine for like your playstation 4 or your xbox one i think that's good if you're trying to get it out on switch because there's a lot of optimizations that they've made for the, for the unreal engine on the on the switch and as long as your game isn't anything too crazy um i think you're going to get really solid results that's that's what we've seen with unreal engine 4 the games that really um aren't like the crazy huge type of games like for example like fortnite you know my hero is more confined um it's just, you know it's a like an action type of fighting game, uh, you're gonna get good results on there. You're gonna be able to do some nice stuff, and it's gonna look good. G image quality and everything's gonna be very on par. Like I've seen the PlayStation 4 version too. It's gonna be pretty close um, based on like the art style they're doing and everything. So I'm excited about that, man. Excited about that. You need to leave. All right, take it easy. Um, let's see. I have a question for uh, Joey's not. Um, Joey's not here. He's not here. Um, so if he was here, you would have already known that he was here, but he, he's not, he's not here. We're not doing, like I said, uh, we're not doing the, um, well, I haven't said it yet, but anyway, let me go ahead and explain that first before you go. Uh, so basically we were supposed to have a, um, we were supposed to have a debate with Joey. Um, I ended up talking to him, um, about what he wanted to debate and, um, he was kind of up for anything, but the problem with it is that it would have been re a repeat of last night's debate. So last night's debate, I talked about, you know, uh, does this Nintendo switch need the, third party like modern third parties for long lasting success and while he was okay at debating that we both decided you know what maybe it wouldn't be a good idea to come on here and literally do the same thing because joey wouldn't be able to prove it just like the last guy now he can speak joey can speak better than the last guy that i had but he still wouldn't be able to prove it and it would just be me repeating the talking points that i did from last night which you guys a lot of you guys already watched we already have two thousand views on a you know a video over an hour that's good for a long video like that on my channel at least so we didn't want to repeat that so what we decided to do instead is that I'm going to have Joey on on the podcast next week and he can talk about what he's frustrated with and I can kind of say, OK, well, what about this and that? So no debate, just have him on as a guest and he can talk about other topics as well, not just that. So we'll have we'll have Jordan Fringe, we'll have Mama Mercy if she can make it, we'll have um, and we'll have Joey on on the podcast. Uh, so. So yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do instead. So he'll kind of come on and kind of talk about uh, just like what he's not happy with or whatever the case is. And we can talk or we can take questions or whatever from there. So yeah, and we'll talk about other things. Um, all right. So that that's basically it, Cray Astra. Um, um, well, if, if it's a frame drop, on, if it's a frame drop online, um, Boise, then that could be online that can be like the online you know net code or whatever it is or like lag you know what i'm saying um not many people have the game here in america so depending on where you were and who you were playing if you're playing somebody all the way in japan or something like that then you might get some lag you know uh, you might have some issues there so uh I don't, frame frame drops and online isn't exactly the same thing as just that, that's just called lag it's not a, called a frame drop it's called lag um so so yeah um P -p 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 my hero wants justice get dub my hero wants uh, wants justice it's coming out october 23rd here in the west so ps4 xbox one nintendo switch pc um you'll be able to pick it up this october in the west so it'll be it'll be then um all right take it easy dude
Um, yeah, people have been talking about the messenger. I need to pick that up, man. But it's just, it's just the problem is that it's just so close to Dragon Quest. I don't want to start the messenger to not finish it. And I just picked up a uh, Dust the Leasing's Tale from Limited Run Games physical. Um, so it's just like, man, I, I'm, I'm going to get the messenger, but I really just want to wait for a physical version because I know they're going to do a physical version of the game because I think it's going to do well. And then I can just buy the physical version and play it then, you know. Um, I have so many games that I need to play, but yeah, definitely. Um, um, oh, okay. He was, uh, oh, oh, the, uh, Obi made a video about complaining about the the messenger saying the messenger was shovelware yeah the messenger is definitely not shovelware i think i think obi's just upset because he's he just doesn't like indie games or he's just tired of indie games and any indie game even if it's a good game he's going to he's going to complain at this point um but no the messenger is definitely not shovelware um if you look at um metacritic let's just go to metacritic um Oh no, that's not good. So if if you look at um if you look at um why is why is Metacritic acting all crazy? Yeah, it's a, it has a 80 it has a 87 score essentially. The the messenger has an 87 score on Metacritic. Let me double check. Yeah, it has a 87. Um, so I don't see how it's, it's, um, it's, it's shovelware at 87. That's actually better than a lot of the bigger games that come out. Um, so, I mean, if destiny was being like, let's say destiny was announced and it was being advertised, would he be happy with that? Even though destiny is not that great of a game. Uh, so yeah, I think, like I said, some people are just upset at this point. Anytime an indie game gets any type of announcement or gets any type of publicity, there's just going to be people that are angry, no matter the quality of the game, it can be a better game than a bigger game but people are just going to be angry or they're just going to be mad or they're going to complain but oh no the messengers definitely don't don't believe him on that front the messengers definitely not shovelware it's a very very good game uh, many people have reviewed the game uh, john from spawn wave talked about how good the game is uh, there's been various other people that have reviewed it it's gotten tens out of tens from some places uh it's a fantastic game i, I wouldn't uh take what obi says on that seriously because uh, he hasn't played it he hasn't played it yet so um the message is great. I think 100% is going to have to have a cartridge to wait for it. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to get the game. Like I said, I just I'm just going to wait for the physical version because I want I want a physical I want a box with that type of game. You know. Oh, okay. But you said Obi didn't have a problem with the messenger. It was the comments on the video. Okay, my bad, my bad. I didn't see that video. I thought I thought that's what you were saying. I thought that's what you were saying because I know I saw him complaining. I saw him complaining about just like a random smaller game getting, uh, I guess, m more like a out on this coming soon or something before like Dragon Ball Fighters or something like that. I know him. He was on Twitter complaining about that. So uh, my bad on that one. Uh, my bad about that one. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and let's move on to uh, the next topic here, guys. So my here, oh, we can go talk about the Switch sales. So yeah, once again, Switch was number one. A um, little bit of a drop off from Obon Week, uh, but still, Switch sold over forty five thousand units in the for the week, uh, like forty six thousand something to be exact. Uh, pretty good. Switch is, I mean, if you average up the weeks every four weeks, four and a half weeks for the month, Switch is averaging at least you know two hundred thousand units sold plus, which is really good. That's really good to have. Uh, so that's that would put it near the U.S. in terms of media, or in terms of MPD sales, uh, with what they had last month. So pretty good, uh, pretty good. All right, so let's go to move on to the next topic here, guys. And um, that is, what am I doing? Uh, the next topic is firmware 6.0. So firmware 6.0 has been uh, data mined out, and basically people are starting to uncover quite a bit of things. Now there's been some rumors about messaging, Nintendo Switch Online being implemented, uh, new icons, um, Super Nintendo controller support, NES controller support, stuff like that. So I, I've made a number of videos, but 
I think the biggest thing is that people are still like people just don't know. People just don't know about this online. Now, when you data mine stuff, that doesn't mean you're going to get every single thing. There could be information or there could be things that Nintendo does not put in there uh, intentionally to make sure that people don't data mine. If I mean, if people don't think that Nintendo knows that people data mine their files and they data mine their their system and updates, Nintendo knows there's some stuff that they could be holding back. I think really what Nintendo is doing is putting out the groundwork and the bare bones, the bare bones for what it's going to be. But I think that it's going to be more than what they've shown us here with up firmware update 6.0, especially because of the 10 hours of maintenance. I don't think 10 hours of maintenance plus a second round of maintenance uh, for the eShop and everything. I don't think that's a that's that's not normal uh, for what they do, what they normally do. So I think the eShop is going to get an overhaul as well, which you can't really data mine out of that. There's nothing to data mine about eShop overhaul. I think they're going to overhaul the eShop. Um, and I think it's going to look more like what they did with the Wii U. I think they're going to try to make it more appealing like that. Um, maybe even add music. They can add themes. I think those are going to be some of the things uh, that they add, uh, which doesn't necessarily affect the actual games that we get. But it does make people stop crying about that type of stuff. At least some people who cry about that. So uh, that's one thing that I think that firmware 6.0 could do. I also think that messaging, um, I think messaging is going to be in. Um, I don't know about, I don't think built-in voice chat is going to be in right away. I think built-in voice chat is going to come um, later down the line or it's going to be done in a weird haphazard way. But I think eventually, excuse me, eventually it'll be built in um, through the system, just maybe not at launch. Uh, but I think messaging will be put in there at launch. Um, now, like I said, there's been some stuff data mine. There really hasn't been a ton, though, because the one thing that I noticed with the data mine is it seems like it doesn't seem it seems like it's intentionally leaving stuff out. Like, our, like OK, we, we put two icons, Toad and Toadette. It's like Nintendo's added more icons than that in every single major update that they've had. They've added multiple icons, but you're telling me for the version 6.0 they only add, or they only added four icons for version 6.0. I mean, I don't think Nintendo only added four icons and then Captain Toad only. I mean, you have Torn of the Golden Country coming out. I think that there's going to be some Xenoblade icons. I definitely think there's going to be Xenoblade icons, Malos, Mithra, Pyra, Jin, and Rex. That's what I would think or even like Nia, um, Nia, Zeke. Uh, Morag. I mean, I think they're going to add some of that as well. So I think there's going to be a, a litany of things, but I don't think they want everybody knowing all the icons they're going to add in everything. So I think it's going to be done in parts. Um, I think the biggest thing to see is after the September 3rd um, update, because there's going to be or after the September 3rd maintenance, because there's going to be another round of maintenance on September 3rd. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what's that in mind out of that because they're doing more. So. We'll have to wait and see before we get all of the, the details on there. Um, but I wouldn't say that I'm excited to pay for online because I'm not excited to pay for online. Um, but I'm excited to see the back end stuff. I just want to see dedicated servers. That's what I really want to see because to me that affects. That's the biggest issue. Not dedicated servers for everything because I already know they're not going to be able to get dedicated servers for every single game. But I would just like to see the online play consistency, quality, all of that be enhanced. That's the biggest thing for me because that's the most important thing that they need to take care of right away for me. It's not being able to talk to somebody else. You know, I can already talk to somebody else like on the Internet. I can already talk to somebody else. Yes, it'd be easier if I had it there. And trust me, I want the built in voice chat. I want the messaging. I want all that stuff. But I can already do all that. There's no way for me to improve their servers. You know what I'm saying? Like, There's no way for me to say, OK, I'm going to improve my match against this person. So for me, I really hope that that the back end stuff is taken care of. Um, and that's the most important thing. And it's not just window dressing like Nintendo could make the, the best voice chat in the world and the best messaging in the world and the best party chat in the world. But then what if the online place like what if the what if the, it's still laggy? What if it's still the, the peer to peer? What if there's still uh, problems that people are having with online play? Then what? Then you have all the features in the world, but then you have a crappy you actually have the bad online play. So, I mean, I can already talk to anybody that I want. I can already message anybody that I want, you know. Uh, so for me, it's more about that. Um, and I hope that they add everything else in. Like I said, I do want all that messaging and voice chat and all that stuff. But guys, like when they do put that stuff in, I mean, I'm just gonna say this right now. Like, don't don't spam me with messages on there because I like, I already know what's gonna, <laughs> I already know what's gonna happen, man. I mean, like don't 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 spam me with messaging or don't don't spam me with requests for voice chats or whatever it is. I mean, let's just let's just keep it cool. Like I need to make sure that we temper this thing, guys. <laughs> I already seen some people say, hey, Ozzy, I'm going to send you this. I'm like, no, 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 please don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. If you need to speak with me, you can just do it on Twitter. Uh, yeah, just do it on Twitter. Just do it on Twitter. <laughs> 
So don't, so don't, don't, don't spam me with messages. If you spam me with messages, I might, I might just, I might just shadow mute. You might just get the shadow mute. You know what I'm saying? You might just get like the, the block communications. Because I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll put in an option to where you can block messaging or block invites. So I might just shadow block you and you not know it. So you got to be careful, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, let me go ahead and answer some questions here. Um, um, all right, so then what's the point? What's the point for you guys? It's for other people. The point is so you guys can communicate with each other and you guys can voice chat with each other for everybody who doesn't have a community. The thing with me is that I have a community. I have a discord for voice chat to where I don't have to send people invites one by one and to where we can live stream and capture audio quickly. So for me, I'm completely different than the normal consumer like everybody else. Everybody else needs normal built in voice chat. Everybody else could use messaging because they're not they don't have a social network like I do. They don't they're not on Twitter like I am. They're not on that. So for me it doesn't make sense to be using like I don't use like my, I have some of you guys on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, right? I don't message anybody anything. Y'all don't message me anything because a lot of us just communicate through here because it's quicker, it's faster, and we have more access to it. And we're not going to be typing out messages. It's just it's just it's just slow to do it on your Xbox One or your PS4. And my Xbox One or my PS4, it's off half the time. My phone is always online. I'm always at my PC. So to get to me faster, you guys obviously know to talk to me. It's way quicker to do Twitter. It's way quicker to do Discord or something like that. Or Twitter is the fastest, you know. So for me, I have no reason to be messaging people on my Switch. Like I have zero reason to do it but for everybody else who doesn't have what i have which is the majority which is like 99 percent of people they need to have messaging they need to have the voice chat for those people who don't have what i've got you know but for me i've got a large network of people i got a lot of people that like when we play games that want a voice chat to me it's much easier and to capture audio for video games it's much easier just to do discord because you guys have the links I don't have to send anything. Discord is just much easier for my life because of how I run things. I'm not wasting my time on random people, like talking to random people over the internet. Why? When I can put that time towards you guys. When I can put that time towards, you know, making new content or interacting with you guys or doing stuff. Like I'm not going to sit there and waste my time talking to some random dude on the internet. Why? I've got a bunch of, I've got thousands of people that subscribe to me here that would love to talk to me at points in video games, you know, and a lot of people that help me and support me. And I'm going to, if I'm going to talk to somebody, I'm going to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to talk to random joe on freaking smash brothers no i don't want to talk to you you know what i'm saying like no i don't want to message you anything no i have nothing to say to random people online you know so for me i don't need that but for everybody else they need that because that's how i was 10 years ago when i didn't have my network or when i didn't have my things yeah i was talking to people on certain stuff yeah i was messaging people you know but now that i'm in the position that i'm in i don't have time for random people i need to make time for you guys you know we need to live stream more i need to make time for you guys so for me it makes no sense i don't i don't need to be direct voice chatting people on my switch you know what i'm saying i got discord and i'm going to talk to people that you know that are that are here and that have been helping so but for everybody else they, they need to make sure that they added that in um rip rip random joe but like i said for all of you guys i mean you guys should i mean that should definitely be something that they add in there i'm hoping that they actually have that stuff in there um i want that stuff built in um built into it um for you guys you know for everybody else uh but for me it's just like whatever but for everybody else um they need that stuff built in so i'm hope, hoping they do it <laughs> now that i have to definitely message you i know as soon as i say guys don't spam me with messages you guys are gonna spam me and send me with messages like i said y'all y'all get shadow blocked <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right let's see here um Oh, yeah. Shout out to Ethan. Uh, one of the things with sponsoring guys or uh, memberships is that like you actually get access to our PE arena and our discord. Um, so you can play a game like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. That's going to be a big game that we're going to be playing against each other and even like Pokemon um, and also My Hero when that comes out. So if you're interested in any one of those games like Pokemon, My Hero, uh, Super Smash Brothers, and you want to get in on the action, we're going to be pretty much streaming live streaming every single night with sub games. And it'll be like we'll have nights where it's like, um, you know, free for all just you know, have fun, throw items. We'll have uh, serious nights where we train together. We'll have um, other type of, we'll have all sorts of stuff that we'll put together. Pokeballs only night or something like that. Or uh, So we'll do a lot of fun stuff. We'll do a lot of fun stuff with it. So yeah, uh, consider that or uh, or Patreon, either one, either one if you want to get in on the action. Um, let's see here. But anyway, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see. Anything else that you guys want to say about firmware 6.0? Um, do you guys, I haven't taken any comments from the, I didn't take any comments on the sales for the Switch. So let me take comments on firmware 6.0. 
um, and My Hero. Uh, actually, no, I took some comments from there. So if you just want to talk about sales for the Switch in Japan, or if you want to talk about Firmware 6.0, that's cool. And then we'll move on to Nindies and Onimusha next. Uh, we're doing pretty good on time. We're only at 40 minutes, so we should be good. Um, yeah, we'll talk about Onimusha uh, Xenogun 238. We'll, we'll talk about um, Onimusha in just a bit. So uh, you can. I'll read off your comment then if you repeat it. Um, slide it into those switch DMs. <laughs> Valhalla Outcast. Valhalla Outcast, you've been around too long to just still have a V by your name, dude. Every time I look at you, I think of Val Venus, and that's a problem. So I need you to I need you to put a profile icon by your name, dude. I need you to put like a like a like a picture. I don't know what you like, whatever video game that you like, just put something. I can't stand it because you're always here. You're I know you're a cool dude. I see you on Twitter too. I know you're a cool dude, but come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> um all right, we got the first donation of the night. Top Ninja to Bud Senior with the seventy percent boys. Um, Ten dollars through super chat. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate the the gold super chat. And he says, since Nintendo won't promote it, um, <laughs> I will here. Here's ten towards Blade Strangers. Well, I mean, you <laughs> you didn't actually give me ten. <laughs> You didn't actually give me ten. Uh, you gave me seven because of because of YouTube. YouTube takes YouTube takes thirty percent, and then also YouTube it takes me two months to get anything from Super Chat actually into my um <laughs> into my account. So uh, two months from now, I'll put your seven towards Blade Strangers. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Bud Senior. I do appreciate that. And yeah, I plan on getting Blade Strangers at some point. I really do plan on getting it. It's just there's a lot of games. I'm one man team, uh, one man team myself, so it's just going to be tough, man. And also, Dragon Ball Fighters comes out next month, too. So it's like Dragon Ball Fighters. We have Valkyria Chronicles 4. Check this out, guys. Check, check this out. Spider Man, Dragon Quest XI, Valkyria Chronicles 4, and Dragon Ball Fighters all next month. What the? F and The World Ends With You comes out in Japan. So we could have been screwed there too. We could have had The World Ends With You, but they moved that to we, they moved that to October for the West because September was too packed with good Switch games. We're like, all right, let's just go ahead and slide that out. Let's just slide that out of uh, September. Let's get that to October because I know the local... Dude, the localization is done. It's already out on smartphones. There's no reason for that game to be October. I think it's like mid-October, like October 13th or something like that. There's no reason for that game to be October something and late september in japan so they slid that game a couple weeks so it can sell better uh so yeah thankfully they did that i'm actually happy that they did that so yeah there's dude, there's so many games in september and think about it spyro was supposed to come out in september too so man freaking crazy um I'm going to give uh, Mama Mercy and to all the, the all the people that are on Discord. I'm going to give you guys the ability to give uh, people who like new uh, patrons or sponsors. I'm going to give you guys the ability to uh, link them. So I'll be like, okay, if you guys need a link to the Discord, just check out uh, one of the, one of the mods. One of the mods will get you one on Twitter. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna give you guys the ability to do that soon. Um, yeah, Fighter Z comes out September 28th. Oh yeah, don't oh don't forget me. Oh my gosh, don't forget me. You're done. You think you can take yeah. I just I almost cussed. <laughs> no, I'm freaking torn up. And people are trying to talk about there's nothing to play. There's no big games for Switch. Where's third party dude? What the heck? Look at all this third party, man. Like Oh my gosh. So in October, October is Starlink and October is the world ends with you and Super Mario Party in October. Oh no. God, Torna. Don't forget me. Well, you know what? To be honest, guys, a lot of those games are going to have to wait because Torna the Golden Country is getting 100 percented. Torna the Golden Country is getting 100 percent and we're going to be streaming that daily or... I, I, either daily or every other day for like like I like the three hours like a good long live streams man dude rip rip our money um rip don't forget me yeah um M M F S gameplay yeah Dragon Ball Fighters is out next month yeah dude um it's out next month on Switch it's out next month. September is freaking packed. And what if Spyro could, Spyro would have had to wait. That would have had to wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, I haven't even been able to play Crash Bandicoot. I got a brand new copy of Crash Bandicoot. A user nicely gifted it to me. 
Um, I got a brand new copy because he loves Crash Bandicoot, and he bought he bought like five copies and gave them away to other YouTubers, I think, or he just gave them away. But he gave me one, um, and I, it's got a, it's a brand new copy. It's actually even it's in the package in my living room. <laughs> it's not even it's not even like behind me in the case. It's it's in the living room in the package that it was sent in. So yeah, man, like God, dude, that's freaking crazy. Yeah, sealed Horizon Zero Dawn, boys, dude. I need to. I really need to get to Horizon Zero Dawn. I got a PS4 Pro. Oh man, dude. But Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest comes first. We gotta Dragon Quest it, cause that's that that game is gonna be hype. We gotta play Dragon Quest. That game's freaking good, man. That game is really good. Uh, what's up, game brothers? Thanks for coming out to the stream, man. Uh, can't escape from crossing fate. Can't escape from crossing fate. <laughs> That's what it reminds me when <laughs> that that the blaze the blaze blue announcer can't escape from crossing fate. <laughs> Ready? Fight! <laughs> oh man, yeah. Um, good thing Monster uh, No More Heroes got yeah, dude. Good thing. That's the thing. When people talk about delays, I'm like, good. Good, good, you dang skippy. It's okay that no more heroes. Let's let's go ahead and talk about no more heroes, right? Since we're talking about um Yeah, you're dang skippy, no more heroes got delayed. Good! Move it out of this year. There's too many games. I mean, like with Starlink and the world ends with you, that's gonna take me a while to get through. There's no way I'm gonna be able to finish Valkyria Chronicles 4, Torn of the Golden Country, and also Dragon Ball Fighters. Like all of those games right there. Like that's just that's just too much. There's just too much, man. Uh, you're not getting it till it comes to Switch Dragon Quest 11. Yeah, I mean, and I thought about that, but I don't know when it's coming to Switch, and I really want to play the game. So I'll p I'll double dip. I'll pick up a Switch version and I'll play it because just because because <laughs> you know um, there's gonna be some other games, guys, that I know a lot of you guys are gonna double dip on. Uh, that are gonna be a well, I don't know if a lot of you guys are gonna double dip on, but there's gonna be some games that that are gonna people are gonna want to double dip on uh, that are announced. Um, but yeah, man, like. Yeah, um, J2 Blue. Yeah, it is. It is possible. It's called the Join button. Um, J2 Blue. If you're on mobile, just go to the desktop site, and you should be able. You should be able to see the big green um, Join button, guys. If anybody's looking for that, because I know a lot of you guys have been asking guys. me. Uh, sorry about that. A lot of you guys have been asking me. You know about that. <laughs> you know about about how to do it because like YouTube's YouTube's weird. YouTube's weird and they do weird things. Um, but yeah, you just gotta hit the Join button. Um, you should see it underneath the video player, but if you're on mobile, just go to a desktop site and you can join from there. You should you should see it on there as well, man. Um, so yeah, um, thank you, Mama Mercy. I appreciate that. Yeah, YouTube Gaming. If you go to the YouTube Gaming, you'll be able to see it there. Um, or you can click the link in the description. Um, um, there's also a link in the description to where you can um, the sponsor player, since you can see it there as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nathaniel Ventura says, "Player, since well in Japan, you can uh, cross save sorta of, between 3DS and PS4 version of Dragon Quest 11. I wonder if you can do it with PS4 and Switch. No, you won't be able to do it with PS4 and Switch. I don't. Wait a minute. They, they might be. They might do something, but I don't know. Something tells me that. Um, I don't know. Maybe Sony would have a problem with that. I know it's not cross play, but I, and I know they let them do it in Japan. But yeah, maybe we'll see if there's some type of cross play with PS4 and Switch. But I mean, those were two versions of the game that came out at the same time. They're selling a double pack. I don't know if they're going to be selling a double pack of. Uh, and you know, the thing about the Switch version too is that like it fits the same purpose. You know what I'm saying? It fits the same purpose. So, yo, what's yo, what's good, Sean Diamond? Let's go. Brand new sponsor in the village. You guys give some love to Sean Diamond. Thank you so much for hitting us with that Mac Q. Hitting us with that Sharingan. Welcome. Welcome. Brand new Elite Ninja to the village. And of course, everybody in the chat, show him some love. Show my man J2 Blue some love for the sponsor. Hitting, it, hitting us with that Infinite Sukiyomi. Let's go. Uh, shout outs, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it'll pop up at some point. We'll get you a Mac Q Sharingan. We'll get it going pretty soon here, guys. Uh, but thank you so much, J2 Blue. Appreciate that, man. Um, of course, uh, if you if you need a Discord link, let me know. I'll get I'll get you hooked up with that on Twitter until we get our mods able to hook you guys up with that. Um, so yeah, just make sure you have Twitter. Shout outs. Um, all right. So do you guys have anything else when it comes to? Um, here we go. Sitting gun. Oh, there you go. 
All right, yo, my, yo, they rolling in. All we have to do is talk about it. <laughs> Shout outs to Ethan R as well. Two in a row. We're getting close to that, guys. We're getting close to the new membership goal. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate that. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the support, homies. Appreciate that. Shout outs. We'll hit you with another Mackie Kishining on. Of course, if you want Ethan, hit me up on Twitter, man. My Twitter link in the description below. All you got to do is just send me a message, let me know, and I'll get you hooked up with the Discord link so you can get in on that action once we start playing some of the bigger multiplayer games that do come out. So shout outs, man. Uh, and we will be playing Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, guys. Uh, sorry this week has just been a little... I know I said I was going to play a couple times, but man, it's just been busy uh, like with the lawyer stuff and all that, man. Like I try to make time, but it's just it seems like there's never enough hours in the day to get everything but we're definitely going to be playing guys don't worry we'll probably have a uh, we'll probably have like a pe arena because i didn't do it this week we'll probably have a pe arena tomorrow because i'm going to be doing some training sessions with uh with danny so um we'll probably have a session for super smash brothers for people to uh, for sponsors and patrons to join in tomorrow so look forward to that it'll be in the morning or like mid-afternoon um so shout outs thank you so much man uh, okay, don't look at my tweets. I'm a port beggar. Well, you know what? Now that you've sponsored, I don't care that you're a port beggar. <laughs> if if you're if you if you're sponsored, I do not care. I do not care if you're port begging. You know what I'm saying? If 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 if, if you're sponsored, your membership don't care if you port beg. Port port the beg away, my guy. And to be honest, actually, I don't care if anybody port. I don't care if any of you guys port beg. Um, I just personally don't like port begging myself because I just feel that it's it's unnecessary. It's like okay. They have a fighting game, right? You or you have a game, and it's like, why do, do why do we have to ask for the game? I mean, Nintendo Switch consumers have been very good to the developers who have been putting out games on the system when it comes to major games. I don't think there's any real flops from the major games that we have on the system. Pretty much every developer has said, you know what? Yeah, for what whatever money that they put in or what they were expecting for how old the game was or anything. I don't think any developer has come out and said, oh yeah, this game's so horrible. We're just not going to do anything more. So I think Switch owners have been good enough and i think the system sales are there to where we don't have to ask for anything now if the developers are asking sony and microsoft fans to ask for stuff then okay then maybe i wouldn't be as much but it's it's they're really they're only picking on us you know i think that's the thing that they're only they're picking on switch fans so that's why i said i'm gonna not associate myself with having to have everything i'm just like if a game comes it comes if it doesn't it doesn't and that's my mindset is that if it comes it comes if it doesn't it doesn't um but I just don't understand why we have to do that. Why at this point? So I don't know. That's just my thought process on it. Um, uh, uh, De uh, Dev Bird, uh, no, no debate tonight because me and Joey kind of realized that it would be uh, a, repeat, a repeat of last night's debate. So Joey's going to come on the podcast uh, next week and we're going to talk about some things next week. Yeah, so shout outs, man. Um, yeah, it, it, like I said, he's going to come on next week. It's not going to be a debate. He's just going to come on the podcast and talk about some stuff with me. Uh, along with Jordan Fringe, so uh, no no debate, but we do have a debate from last night, uh, Dev uh, Dev Bird. If you want to check out the debate from last night, we do have that. That's already up. There's already two thousand, uh, already over two thousand views on that one. So if you want to watch that debate from last night, you can definitely do so um, at any point. It's already up on the channel. Just go to my channel, look it up. You'll see it. You'll see PE debate. It'll be right there for you. Um, but yeah, we would have we determined that it would be a repeat of this of last night's debate. So why even do it? You know, instead, I made a Smash Brothers video for you guys instead, and I released that. I worked on that because I knew I'd have time. I just made a Smash Brothers video, and I went to the gym, but I wasn't feeling, I wasn't really feeling good at the gym today, guys. I cut it short. Like, I usually work out for two hours. I only worked out for like an hour and like 15 minutes just because I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it today. I just wasn't, wasn't feeling it. So I just decided to, ran on, ran on the treadmill for about 55 minutes, almost an hour, lifted some weights for about 15 minutes, and I was like, I'm good. I'm just going to go home. So, yeah. Um... I did Prince Girl, and we'll talk. We can talk about that in the Q and A section. We can talk about that in the Q and A section. Um, uh, yeah, the the stamp, Mama Mercy, the stamp is coming back. The stamp is going to come back, Mama Mercy. I just need to uh, find the file for it again because I I lost some of the stuff. But yes, the stamp is uh, coming back. The stamp will come back. Um, I'll look through your mess because I know you sent it. I think uh, your husband sent me it, so I'll I'll definitely get the stamp back. Don't worry. Um. <laughs> uh james Clark said, yeah that's that would be a debate that would be it you guys like the smash video i i did i did a little bit of did a little bit of editing on the smash video i'm trying to do a little bit more um you know comical editing and stuff like that for you guys but yeah the smash video was was fun to make it was it was interesting um so yeah um all right so you guys want to um 
you guys want to um, talk about the next thing here? And I think the next topic would be um, Nindies and Onimusha. So basically, the Nindies presentation kind of caused a little bit of a backlash and then um, and not. Um, so here is the funny thing about the the, the, the Nindies presentation that they kind of showed. It didn't seem like people were really too thrilled with the new games that they really highlighted and showed. It seemed like the the games at the end that was what people were um, in the Nindy showcase. That is, uh, people were excited about because it's Transistor, Bastion. Those games are like built for Switch, man. Like I cannot tell you guys. Just to let you guys know right now, and I, like, I understand, like, the Nindy's presentation, the new games didn't look that, like, oh my gosh, crazy, because they were kind of weird type of simulation. There's a untitled Goose game, or there was, like, a really, like, the pixelated type of Celeste type of game. So I don't think they're as visually as appealing as some of the other games that we saw in the the um, other presentation, the Nindy's presentation. Like, there was, like, Everspace, you know, there was, like, the Bad North game. There were some other games that kind of visually looked better, so I think people were upset with that. But at the end of the presentation, where they ran through the games, I think the the two biggest things there because we hadn't got this leak before is transistor and bastion those two games are really high quality guys like i know people like to talk i said indie games whatever but i i kid you not transistor is a game that has the type of gameplay that you would expect out of a bigger budget release like you'd expect out of like you know like the world ends with you or like uh, it, it has really solid um, gameplay. It's just the graphics aren't quite as, what, like I said, obviously it's not quite as what you would see, but the graphics are still really good. And Bastion is also a really good game. Both of those games give you plenty of hours of gameplay. They have really good replay um, replay in there. Transistor is really strategic. It's like a game that's going to make you think. It's really good. And I think those were probably the highlights. of the, uh, For me, those were the highlights because those games are going to be instantly better on the Nintendo Switch. Like at this point, Bastion, like if you haven't played it, like playing it on the Xbox 360 or whatever, or playing it on PC, that's one thing. But to be able to take that type of game and play it anywhere that you want, that is so good. And same thing with Transistor. Like both of those games are really good. And I'm so happy that they're both on there because I actually played both of them. I played Bastion back when it came out on the Xbox 360, loved it. I played Transistor back when it came out on the PS4, loved it. Both really good games. I wish they did a double pack though. And I wish there was physical. If they did a double pack physical and charged me, I, they can charge me 60 bucks and I would have bought it. They could have charged me 60 bucks for that double pack physical and I would have bought it. But that's too much for them. I know that's too much. For, although it's Warner Bros. too. I mean, I, I wish Warner Bros. would have pitched in and just like, hey, you get Transistor, you get Bastion, double pack, 60 bucks, or heck, 50 bucks, 49.99. You know, maybe they can make a little bit more, you know, Skrilla, a little bit more Skrilla on there. So, I mean, I would have been totally down for that. Um, maybe it'll happen in the future. And that's my that's my thing that I'm a little worried about. I'm like, man, what if they do a double pack with Trans Transistor and Bastion? But imagine like double pack Transistor and Bastion on one cartridge. That would have been so good. And they could have charged me more. I would have paid more for it. I would have, I, I would have paid. I probably would have paid over sixty. I know most people wouldn't, but I I, I would have because those are two of my favorite independent games. Those are two of my favorite games just in general, like type of games. So I mean, uh, it's a little frustrating, but hey, it is what it is. Um, Everspace looks really good. Everspace looks really good. Um, I do think that, but it's, it's one of those rogue type of games, you know, and that's the one thing that I'm like, uh, another rogue type of game. Like I've been playing Dead Cells and Dead Cells is so good, but I keep on freaking dying and going back to the beginning. I don't care if there's teleports. I just want to, I, I get like a legendary weapon and then I freaking lose it because I die because there's this cheap enemy that kills me like in a couple hits and I, I, I just... I can't deal with these stupid rogue games, dude. Like, oh, it's so frustrating. So I haven't played Dead Cells in a while because these damn rogue games, man. So that's the thing that I'm worried about every space. I'm like, man, this game is going to look really cool. I'm going to get all these upgrades and I'm going to die. And then I got to go all the way back to the beginning. Why can't this, why can't I just have a save point? Why can't this just be a normal game? So that's the one thing that I'm worried about with these rogue games, man. Like, whereas Transistor and Bastion, there's none of that garbage. Like, you just, like, there's save points. You can just play the game. I don't got to worry about that. If I need to leave, if I need to turn off the game, it's the old freaking... Uh, uh, yeah, I bet, man. But I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to die and go all the way back to the beginning. I can't, I, I really tried with these. Dead Cells is amazing, guys. But I really tried, but I can't do these rogue games anymore, man. I'm done. I think I'm done with these rogue games. I'm going to play it. I'm gonna play it, but I think I'm done with these rogue games, man. I think I'm, um, I think I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm just. I think I'm done, man. I can't. I can't deal with them, guys. I can't deal with them. <laughs> I 
can't deal with these rogue these rogers these rogue rogains can't deal with these rogains guys <laughs> Um, so what are you guys' thoughts on that? Uh, also, Onimusha was announced as well. So Nindies and Onimusha. Onimusha is looking good. Um, unfortunate for Switch owners, though. Um, there's going to be there's not going to be a physical version in in the West. Um, only PS4 and Xbox One. Switch doesn't get a physical version of Onimusha uh, Warlords. Uh, you just get a digital version. However, just like uh, just like what is it? Just like um, Okami. There will be a physical version in Japan, and chances are it's going to support English just like Okami. So if you want to import, you can definitely import Okami, and uh, you can uh, you can you can play it there. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, physical version uh, only for PS4 and Xbox One, and Europe. All of Europe doesn't get a physical version. Even on PS4 and Xbox One, you get no physical version of <laughs> of Onimusha. So the only place to get a real physical version of the game um, in America is PS4 and Xbox One in Japan. Um, there's no Xbox One physical version, but there's a Switch and PS4 physical version. In Europe, there's no physical version whatsoever at all. So the big loser in all this is Europe because they get absolutely no physical versions no matter what. No matter what system you're on, no matter where you're at, no matter whatever it is, you get zero physical versions. Where at least in North America and in Japan, there's some physical versions for the people there, so on some systems, so that's unfortunate, and it's just a classic case of Capcom being Capcom. It's almost like they were playing like a game of freaking Risk, or they were throwing darts, and they're like, "Hmm, if we throw a dart and it hits that point, that gets a physical version. We throw a dart and it misses Europe, and it lands on North America, they get it." And then after they threw some darts, they like rolled like the roulette or whatever. And, like, whatever it landed on got physical versions like, oh, PS4 and this. Okay, physical version. Or PS4, Xbox One. Oh, but in Japan, it got this version. So it seems like they just randomly threw together what, what. <laughs> like, I've never seen this type of haphazard type of physical version versus digital. Like I said, I'm not huge on this. It's like, whatever, man. You know, it's like an old game. But, like, like I've never seen this type of weirdoness between Europe and America and Japan and America and PS4, but in Japan, no Xbox One digital, but PS4 and Switch, America, PS4, Xbox One, no Switch, Europe, no physical version at all. Like, what kind of, what kind of weirdo logic is, dude, like, Capcom's, they're just the weirdest company in the world, man. Like, I swear they play video games upside down, and then they, like, every now and then somebody has a stroke of genius and makes, like, Devil May Cry 5 or, like, Resident Evil 2 Remake. But outside of that, after, like, outside of their strokes of genius, they have just... But even with those games, they do weirdo things. Like, like the like the Resident Evil... Like, the Resident Evil 2 Remake Collector's Edition. Like, like what, what's, what's going on with all of that, dude? Like, they just... <laughs> Oh, that and I, t I made the video Capcom being Capcom and this is what Capcom is Capcom Capcom reminds me of like Manny Ramirez and you guys watch baseball Capcom is like Manny Ramirez like that, that that is it's like man this person's like Manny Ramirez is really good but then sometimes he's just it's like Manny being Manny it's just like you know somebody throws the baseball trying to get somebody out and he cuts he he literally gets he he makes his like this crazy effort to cut the freaking throw off and the person scores or whatever it's like they it just reminds me of Manny Ramirez you know what I'm saying like it just that's just what Capcom is they're Manny Ramirez if, if, if you don't know who he is look him up and look up Manny being Manny and you'll see what I'm talking about when he plays on the baseball diamond or when he plays he's, he's retired now he would make these like he was amazing he'd hit these home runs he makes great he does but then he just does the weirdo stuff in the field and he just does weirdo things in the dugout I mean Oh god, <laughs> they're so weird, man. They're so weird. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what, what, what's going on with Capcom. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Boston Red Sox. Well, even, um, even Dodgers, Manny. Like, cause you know, you guys know, I, I live in California. I, I live close to Los Angeles. Even Dodgers, Manny did weird. Manny, Manny being Manny. Thing. So it's not even just Boston Red Sox, Manny. It was, it was, it was Dodgers, Manny too. Like, <laughs> like it was, it was both. I mean, yes, mainly Boston Red Sox because that's where he played most of his career. But it was definitely he did some weird stuff here in LA as well. Like there was definitely some Manny, Manny being Manny moments uh, that I heard about. You know, especially like out of the baseball diamond, like in Los Angeles. It was like, 
It, did that happen? Like, oh, okay, okay, Manny. You know, just just do you, okay? Um, which is weirder, Capcom or Nintendo? Ca Capcom by far. Capcom is the weirdest company. They're one of the weird, the, the biggest weird. The Capcom is the weirdest Japanese company. They are the weirdest Japanese company, easily, easily. Yeah, they included a typewriter. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Shout outs, shout outs to uh, shout, yeah. It, well, stroke. I'm just saying in the company, like they'll have a stroke of genius at times. Like Capcom will, but Capcom will recover like with their fighting games. Like Capcom will make a good fighting game. You know, I think Soul Calibur. Oh, that's not Capcom. That's Bandai Namco. Um, <laughs> the Capcom will make another good like fighting game. I mean, I think they'll they'll be okay in that front. But uh, but yeah, man. I mean, it's weird. Um. Uh, talk about the guy you went in on Twitter earlier. Uh, Big Mo, we can talk about that. Um, we can talk about that at the end because it's kind of getting towards with the guy Junior on Twitter. Um, it's getting it's kind of getting towards the slander type of you know thing because he's starting to tag my name and other people's. Um, I guess we can talk about it, right? Whatever. We're pretty much in Q and A time anyway, so yeah, Q and A time and stuff. So we can talk about that. Um, there's this guy, Junior, and um, listen, if Junior, he's probably not listening, but if he is listening, like, I'm going to give him a fair warning, you know, um, dude, keep my name out of your mouth, like, when you're talking about stuff, like, just keep my name out of your mouth, keep my name out of your Twitter, your Twitter fingers, because now he's getting into, like, the slander type of view, what he's doing is, like, anytime people talk about features and stuff, he'll tag my name and say, oh, well, if this was Player Essence, Player Essence said that there's never going to be any, like, he doesn't want any features on the Nintendo Switch, and he doesn't want built-in stuff, like, he's starting to sit there and say that I said these things, or I would say these things, when I never said those things, and he even went as far as to linking, because I said, look, dude, I said, why are you lying, so I started, I, I first joked him, like, I, I put the, I put the, uh, you know that that meme with the, with the black guy that's like, "Why you effing lying?" and like he's singing and he's dancing. Like I put I put that meme on there. Like okay, I'll just like joke around with him. But then he continued to press the issue and continued to press the issue and saying that I'm saying these things. I said, "Look, dude, here's what I'll do for you, man." Because he's been doing this for a while now. I said, "I've been ignoring most of it." I said, "Look, here's what I'll do." I said, "You find a video where I say because he told me he said this. He said this exactly. He said." Oh, well, he says that the Nintendo Switch shouldn't have voice chat in there and he, you know, and it shouldn't have features. And I'm like, no, that's not the case. I've never, that's not what I've been saying. I'm saying that it should have all that. I said, find a video where I say that. Come on live and debate me on that video and I will buy you, and I, and I will buy you an Xbox One X, PS4 Pro, or PC, your choice. You find a video where I say that, where you say what you're accusing me of, I will, I will buy you any one of those systems. I'll ship it the next day, next business day to your house. Let me know. You know, so then he says, OK, and then he goes out and he finds a video that I made about Diablo three and, and how it supports the voice chat app. And then he says and then he tells people to skip to 418. And that's not where I start talking about my thoughts on the voice chat app and everything like that. I start talking about that before that. So he intentionally watched the video, skipped over the parts where I said that the voice chat app was silly, skipped over the parts where I said that Nintendo should have built-in voice chat to the system, and he hones in on me saying, oh, well, me personally, like, I need, like, I'm just going to use Discord. So for me, it's not a big deal. So he tries to steer people, like, you know what I'm saying? He tries to cherry pick and steer people into that, and hopefully they don't look at what I said right before that or what I said right after that. So that's getting into the, like, when you're taking my content, and you're putting that out there, you know, on your Twitter, and you're saying that, oh, he's saying these things, look at this part, and you're lying to people, that's getting into slander territory, you know what I'm saying, you know, that's getting into the territory where it's like, okay, now you're trying to damage my brand, now you're trying to damage, like, you know, what I'm doing, because now you're having people saying, oh, well, OJ's saying that this shouldn't be in there, this shouldn't be in there, he's anti-consumer, or he's fanboying for this, so that's damaging my brand, so this is what I'll say for to Junior, who's the dude on Twitter, I'm going to say this, dude, you tag me again, with that garbage, you tag me again with that garbage, I'm going to make a video blasting you with your Twitter handle and everything, comparing what you said, and don't get mad at me if people start going to your channel and saying things, because I'm not going to tell people not to say anything to you, I'm not going to tell people to attack you or not, but don't do that again, otherwise, because you're going into the slander territory, bro, um, so I'm going to tell them that, Hopefully, I mean, like I said, I'll probably link this video to him. I'll, I might clip this part and link it to him because it's getting ridiculous. I need him to stop. So 
because that's definitely like he put that on obi's channel so obi is also you know he's a big nintendo guy you know and there's other viewers that i'm on you know that are subscribed to obi that are also subscribed to me so all of obi's twitter users are seeing that garbage and what if they're not actually looking at the video you know what i'm saying so people are seeing that stuff that he's saying so that's the problem that i have because it's it's complete lies he's completely lying whether he's trying to do it to get a ruse out of me or to make me do something like this that's fine but if you do it again I'm not responsible for what people say to you afterwards. Let me just say that right now because I'm going to put you on blast. So that's my one morning dim. I'm not responsible for anything else that happens afterwards. Don't go crying to me if people are trolling you or whatever the case is because I'm going to put you on blast, man. Um, so I'm just that, that's your that that's your last one. If I ever see another link from this guy, Junior, if I see another link from you, dude, I, I swear I'll do that. So you just need to you need to chill, man. Like because I'm tired of him. He's been doing that for a while now. I've been ignoring it. But today, just like I was like, okay, that's the last straw. Like I'm gonna call this dude out. So, so yeah, man. Um, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm like I said. I'm not gonna put him on blast right now because I don't. I mean, I don't want people to like. I don't want people to go over to his channel right now and I mean, go over to his Twitter and all that right now. But I'm just saying, like, if he does it again with slander. And then trying to lie and try to tell people, oh, get to this part right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he tries to lie again, then I'm going to put him on blast. So there's this dude that's just lying on Twitter. He's just been lying for months now, you know? Uh, so, like, that's my that's my last warning. That's my last warning to him. Um, block him. I don't really feel like block. I don't really feel like blocking people. Like, I usually block, you know, I block people. But, like, I only block people, like, when they say or do, like, racist things or stuff like that. The reason why I don't want to block him is to see he, if he's actually tagging me and if he's actually spreading slander about me. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen him been doing that. So I don't want to block him because if I block him, then I can't really necessarily see if he's doing that type of stuff. So I want to see it if he if he is because I'm keeping tabs now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm keeping tabs. So if he does do that again, like I said, it's getting into the slanderous territory to where other users that might be subscribed to me are seeing, oh, well, did he say that? Or he's telling people to skip to some part and not watch the whole video. You know what I'm saying? So that's the part that I'm like, okay, I don't care how many few subscribers. He's going on popular channels and saying that about me, which is a problem, which I have a problem with that. So that's, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest issue that I have. Now, uh, you know, I, the, the last tweet that from, you know, from him, he, he put out like, hey, skip the 418 and see where he said that. I quoted that tweet and I said, hey, man, like, listen, I said I'd buy you this, um, you know, if you can find that information to where I said that. I said the voice chat app was silly. I said Nintendo should have it built in. You in that video, you link, and I said you have mental issues or there's a problem with you. But I told him you better stop, man. But this is my last, like it's my absolute last warning. Don't do it again, man. Like don't do it again. Um, so anyway, that was that. Um, <laughs> Big Bo says, "Don't worry." I'm, like I said, I, I'm not responsible if you does it. If you do it again, Junior, <laughs> this is your last warning. I'm not responsible for what people say to you afterwards. So. I'm just giving you a fair warning. I'm not saying that I'm going to send people after you. Not saying that I'm not. All I'm saying is I'm not responsible because you doing sl now you're slanderous. You know what I'm saying? You're saying you're telling you're telling people that I'm saying certain things on popular channels when I'm not. When I didn't say those things. So you're intentionally trying to mislead people. So if you want to play like that, I can definitely play like that. I, I don't got to be nice guy to you anymore. So last warning, dude. I don't know if you, like I said, I, he's probably not watching this video. He doesn't watch my videos. He said he unsubbed, but. Last warning, my guy, last warning, don't do it anymore, because, and I don't usually do this at all, you know what I'm saying, when people say stuff, but, you know, this, this is, like I said, this is getting out of hand, this is getting a little bit out of hand for what he did today, so, that's, that's the last warning I'll give, um, yeah, I'll, uh, Fire Blast, um, I will, I will, um, get him a link, Fire Blast, uh, Ethan, uh, relax, dude, I will get you the link, um, right after this podcast is done, let me get you the link. Just hit me up on Twitter, tag me, and I will get you. To, I'll get you the link right after that. Uh, right after this podcast is done, dude. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, <laughs> seniors, um, yeah, he's lying exactly. Um, oh no, you don't have to apologize, Ethan. No, you don't have to apologize, dude. You don't have to apologize. Actually, you know, you know what, man? Let me go ahead and get you that link right now, and I'll do it right now for you, man, because I'm pretty sure you want it. So let me go ahead and get you that right now. But no, you didn't have to apologize. Didn't have to apologize. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. I see. You. I see you there, dude. Let me go ahead and let me let me go ahead and get it to you right now. Give me just a second. Give me give me one second, guys. Uh, get your questions ready, guys. If you have questions, uh, get your questions ready, and I'll be more than happy to answer. What's up, the Nintendo? I saw Nintendo Prime here, um, in the uh, channel. What's up, Nintendo Prime? How you doing today, man?
Okay, yeah, definitely not reading that name. <laughs> Shout outs, man. Thanks for the Twitch follow. <laughs> oh, man, definitely not reading that name. But yeah, man, shout outs, dude. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right, and there. There you go. All right, so it should be in your Twitter inbox, uh, Ethan. Cool. All right. Ataki, can you can you can you do that? Can you make sure you message it to them? Don't don't put it public tweet. Uh, when am I gonna play Pocket Rumble? I don't know if I'm gonna play Pocket Rumble. I don't know if I'm gonna play Pocket Rumble. Um. So yeah, I don't know. So if you guys have questions, tag me at Player Essence, and I'd be more than happy. Um. Thank you, Nintendo Prime. I appreciate that. I'm a big fan of Nintendo Primes. I watch all of Nintendo Primes videos. Streamlabs is not working. What is this? What is this? Streamlabs is not working. Shoutouts to Michael O'Brien with the $2 donation. He says, I haven't been able to, to work Streamlabs. Sorry. It's okay. You don't have to apologize for donating. Uh, thank you for the $2 donation. I appreciate or two. I think, I think that's British pounds. $2 British pounds. So that's, I think that's like a $2.47. So thank you for the donation, man. I appreciate that. Um, so Streamlabs is not working. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, it should be, though. If not, um, what's it called? We can get a mod to put a, put a link uh, for people for the right, for the right uh, link. If one of the mods can do that. Use the command. Um, what is your all-time favorite JRPG? Yeah, uh, Blue Bolt. My all-time favorite JRPG is Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo. That's my all-time favorite. If you want to know my favorite version of Chrono Trigger, um, is definitely the DS version. That's my favorite version of Chrono Trigger to play, the DS version, because it has some extra content put in there, the monster battling and stuff like that. It's really good, and it was portable. Uh, you can play Chrono Trigger comfortably, lying down. I loved it. I played a lot of Chrono Trigger in college on the DS. Um, it's probably on your end. Oh, no, you don't have to apologize. You don't have to apologize at all. Uh, thank you, Michael O'Brien. You don't have to give me anything, first of all. Let me just let me just say that right now. Mike, you, Michael, you have to, you are, this is free content for everybody here. You don't have to give me anything, so you don't have to apologize for giving somebody else, uh, giving somebody else money, giving me money. I don't, you don't have to apologize for that. But thank you. I appreciate the donation, homie. Um... Uh, yeah, you know what? Okay, yeah, Sean Diamond or um, Nintendo Prime, that is a very good point. Yeah, Streamlabs has issues sometimes, so a link to PayPal. Yeah, okay, so here's what I'll do, guys. Um, by the next chat, I will have a direct link to PayPal. If, if, if it's not working for you, if Streamlabs isn't working for you, I'll, st I'll have a PayPal thing up so I can see. Um, I see notifications on PayPal, so I will make sure that I give you guys a shout out. Um, so yeah, if, if, if Streamlabs isn't working, um, then I will have a link to the PayPal in the in the description as well. And I'll also I'll put up a new command as well for PayPal too if Streamlabs isn't working. So thank you, appreciate that. Uh, good good suggestion, Nintendo Prime. Thank you for that that tip. That's a good tip, by the way. Um, Prince Gross says, uh, Player, since uh, would you uh, would love to hear your opinion on the dev com uh, comments against Nintendo regarding the Cosmic Star Heroine? I think he has something. I think I think he has some. Um, he has some 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 type of say. He has some type of say. And Aaron, uh, and Aaron, shut up, okay, Aaron. I am very nice about that stuff, and you guys know I don't harp on you guys about that at all, and I get, deliver amazing content to you guys, and I appreciate each and every one of you, so shut up, Arad. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> So yeah, I, I see what the Cosmic Star Heroin uh, developer uh, was saying, and um, I get I get I get what he's saying, you know, um, I get it, um, and I I can see why he's upset. I can see why he's upset, especially because a lot of other indie developers have been getting a little bit more promotion in his game. Like Nintendo necessarily wasn't like too fond of the game, you know. It took him a while to get it, so I think he was just frustrated with the whole process, the time it took. 
you know, and everything, and then not really just getting, not, not even getting, like, a retweet, like, hey, Cosmic Star Heroine is on the Nintendo Switch. I think Nintendo, I don't know if Nintendo had something out for the game, because they didn't prior, like, they didn't do anything to it. I think that, like, if you're, like, an indie developer, and if you don't, like, release on Switch first, or if you don't add some type of sw cool Switch feature, Nintendo's like, oh, okay. Like, Nintendo treats you like the redheaded stepchild if you're an indie developer. Now, if you're, like, like you know, for instance, like, like SteamWorld Dig. SteamWorld Dig has really cool features, right? It's like, okay, it, it launched first on the Nintendo Switch. It's like, okay, it has, it has amazing, still to this day, has some of the best HD rumble on the Nintendo Switch. It's like, okay, you're using the features. You get that. But, like, Cosmic Star Heroine literally does, doesn't use any of it. Like, there's no HD rumble. I think at this point, HD rumble is, like, it's kind of like a necessity, especially for an indie game. Like, Cosmic Star Heroin could have been amazing with some cool like, HD rumble. Like, the different types of weapons that you can use. Everybody has, like, a really weird weapon. Um, it would have been great, you know? Um, but the fact that they didn't put HD rumble, they didn't really prioritize, like, Switch at all. I think that's what caused the problem. So, I mean, I think he has a, he has a, he has a point. He has somewhat of a point. Although, he did clarify his comments. I don't, I don't think that people should be mad at him or angry. I think that it's just frustration from from the development process and you know everybody's human right everybody has their days to where they're upset about things um xeno gun uh, 238 says uh player is looking forward to the onimusha release hope capcom adds the og xbox version genma onimusha as genma mode and release an updated onimusha 23 dawn of dreams and blade warriors well let's hope they do all that that seems like a lot of work <laughs> seems like a lot of work um um so wait, hold up. Dang, the second time OJ mixed mixed me up with someone uh, this stream. Did I mix you up with somebody? My bad if I did. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> my bad. Um, uh, ML, ML, ML Cookie Dough says, Plus, and stopped hearing about the YouTube demonetization stuff, so you doing better in that regard, yeah? Yeah, I am doing better, but after that whole, once the YouTube monetization, like demonetization started and everything, my channel took ridiculous hits to algorithms, so while, yeah, I don't get my videos demonetized anymore, my algorithms destroyed because of it. I, I did, like, that something happened within the demonetization store my algorithm got jacked because of like the type of views that I was getting before and the type of traffic that I was getting on certain videos that traffic isn't being stared towards me after the demonetization so while yeah I'm not getting demonetized anymore it it completely jacked my algorithm and I don't know how to get it back to where it was so I've tried everything and I don't know where to get it back to where it was where more people see the videos and everything and more of my subscribers can get access to that and shows up on their front pages and stuff so while, while, yeah, good, you know, that happened, um, I got my algorithm screwed, and I don't know if they'll ever come back. Um, Shoutouts to NR Merit with the $5 donation uh, through Streamlabs. Got that Streamlabs shimmy. He says, got that coffee essence mug today. Thank you so much, NR Merit. I do appreciate that for the $5 donation. And, of course, um, for the uh, the Merch Boys purchase as well, man. NR Merit, big supporter. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Guys, give some, guys give some love to NR Merit in the chat. Um, so shout outs, man. Um, let's see. Michael Barnes is not sure if it gets me a request, but, um, but if it does, can you play Hollow Knight? Yeah, I can play Hollow Knight. Absolutely. Um, yeah, just, um, if you, I think you probably just forgot to, uh, ask for music, but yeah, definitely. Um, you could just put it in the message. Like if you make a donation, you could just put it in the message and I'll play the music for you. Um, all right. So you said Hollow Knight. Uh, let me find it. Hollow Knight, Knight Kingdoms. Kingdom's Edge. Yeah, isn't there like a new expansion coming up for Hollow Knight pretty soon here? It's gonna be like pretty good. All right, you guys, let me know how it sounds. You guys, hear it okay? It just came out. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Ethan R says, "Did you find the direct joke, uh, direct joke, any funny on the Xenoblade stream or no? The direct joke? What direct joke? I don't know what you're talking about, Ethan R. Uh, players, uh, when J2 Blue sponsored, you thought it was me. Did I say it was you? I thought I thought I said it was J2 Blue. Really? Oh, I I must have messed up. 
Yeah, J2 Blue. Shout outs to J2 Blue, man. Sorry, if I if I mixed you guys up, I'm terribly sorry. Shout outs to J2 Blue. <laughs> I don't know why I would mix you two up, dude. Like what the heck? Shout outs, man. Thank you, J2 Blue, for the membership. Thank you, I appreciate that. And also Ethan R. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> sorry about that, man. Uh, yes, the DLC dropped for Hollow Knight on Tuesday. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, shout outs to Avidin with the two dollar donation. Shout outs to my boy Avidin. Avadon, Avadon. Maybe I'm tripping, but Nintendo Switch has no games this holiday season. Sounds very close to last year's. Uh, the Switch only has uh, two games. Anyway, here's some dollars for your pockets. And he says, music, Final Fantasy VIII, force your way. Absolutely. Thank you, Avadon. I appreciate the donation. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, like everyone's saying certain things, but for me, dude. I've got more than plenty. I, I've got plenty to play, so I'm good. But I can see why some people might be upset. But I'm not. I'm good. I'm good with the games. But then again, I'm not like a super like huge like Western art, you know, Western gamer type of guy. I have a backlog of Western games dating back to 2015 on the PS4 and the Xbox One. So, I mean, I still need to. I I still need to get to The Witcher at some point, even though I don't like the game. I still need to get to it. The Witcher. There's Horizon Zero Dawn. I've got a million different Western games to play. So it is what it is on that front. You know what I'm saying? Um, all right, Force Final Fantasy VIII. That's an interesting game, Final Fantasy VIII. Huh. Very interesting game. Hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and get that going. Shout out to J2 Blue. <laughs> Let's see, player. Since when I said there was a direct announced on and and it's coming on the on the sixth, uh, Ethan. No, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. <laughs> You're okay. You you've been apologizing. I you, you apologized before, but I'm I'm not mad. I'm not mad. You're cool, dude. You're good. Um, Zeno Emblem says, Plus, I wanted to express how awesome it was that Fire Emblem Awakening uh, got you through some hard times." Yeah, it did. Awakening also got me through some truly dire times, and it's uh, now my favorite game. Yeah, it's my it's one of my favorite games of all time. Um, but yeah, Awakening got me through some really hard time, guys. Uh, hard times. Um, I'll have a video on it um, next next week. I'll have a video on it. I already made one video on it, but the video wasn't very good in my opinion. I'm holding up like a stupid a freaking Lucina amiibo. So I'll make a better video explaining what happened, and I'll have a better a better title for it as well. Like I'll just have like Fire Emblem saved my life, you know. Um, just that, not even Fire Emblem Awakening. I'll just put Fire Emblem Saved My Life. So I'll just put that as a title, um, and I will I will edit it a lot better than than uh, than before. So so yeah, I look forward to that. I'll probably do it. It'll be like uh, think of like my Smash Brothers video that I did. Like I'll put some stuff in there. I'll make sure there's some cues to what parts like moved me and stuff like that. So I'll have better editing, um, and I'll make a video on it. Um. Yeah, yeah, man. I'll go over what was the problem that I had in 2013. I'll be honest. With, I mean, I've been very honest with you guys with what happened in 2013 with me. Like, it was just, just a horrible year. It was just a horrible year. And it's my fault. Like, the year was horrible. It's not like, it's not like somebody else did. It's not like somebody else, like, like, oh my gosh, woe weighs me, you know? Like, oh, somebody else, you know, made my year bad. It's everything that happened bad to me was pretty much almost 100% of my fault. It's just... Sometimes you make mistakes, and that's kind of what I was going on. Like, I didn't, like, we're not talking, like, jail or arrested, but just, like, just mistakes in general and just, you know, you got to be, you got to be grown up. You got to be responsible. You know, like, at that time, you know, I was really young, and I had my, you know, my daughter was born in 2012. So 2013 is, like, you know, they're getting older, you know, and I don't know if any of you guys had children, but in 2013, I was kind of broke, kind of, like, not having money, you know. Um, the website was not doing well. Um, there's just a lot of problems in general, so there's nobody else to blame but me, you know, nobody else to blame but me there, but I'm, you know, being a young man, trying to get a business going, not having any money, having a website that's not doing well, having people attack you on the internet, you know, not having the best, you know, uh, you know, just, just in, in general, just things just weren't working, you know, things just weren't working, and it just, and the only thing that saved me, the only thing that saved, and this is, this is the, the speedy version of it, guys, um, I'll have a better, like I said, I'll have a better, the only thing that saved me was Fire Emblem. I had crappy days. I'd be editing all day. My back would hurt. I'd be tired. I'd be editing all day on the on the website, you know. And then also the Wii U failing and all that. That didn't help either. 
The Wii U just being trash and no games to play, that didn't help. Um, well, the Wii U's not trash in general. Like, like there was games to play, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, people just bashing it and just, just like, oh, there's like the, 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 the software droughts. We didn't even have the indie games. We didn't even have the indie games the Switch is getting to fill gaps, dude. Like, people complain about now, dude, the Wii U, we didn't even get good indie games. Stuff like the Messenger, that never came to the freaking Wii U. Where, where was our Messenger at? Where is our Elysian Tale? Where is um our, you know, uh, where are all these indie games? They weren't even there on the Wii U, dude. We just get freaking nothing but, like, virtual console releases every now and then, man. Like, there was so many droughts and gaps. We essentially got nothing. Like, I think Nintendo fans would have killed for the or Wii U owners, would have killed for the indie games that we're getting at this point. But, um... But yeah, there wasn't even that. So yeah, I was just going through a hard time, man. That's really what it was. Um, Wii U ruined OJ's life confirmed. <laughs> yeah, but um, let's see here. Um, player since oh, when you make the when you make when you remake the Fire Emblem vid, please use the classic id beginning. Oh yeah, it's gotta be the id beginning. It, it's gotta be the id beginning. You gotta have that for the id beginning. You guys want? I think. I think. Not the whole thing, though. I think we start out with id, and then once things... I can explain how things got better, and then we can move into more of an upbeat track. You know, maybe some more music from Awakening. So, so yeah. Um, did I just get a donation? Oh, snap. Five, ten... Oh, I didn't hear it because of the, the music that was playing. Shoutouts to Mark with uh, five minutes ago. I'm terribly sorry about that, Mark. I did not hear it. Uh, with a $10 Streamlabs shimmy. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate that. Thank you for the donation. I really do. Sorry that I missed it five minutes ago. I'm sorry about that. I didn't see it, and my my uh, notification thing was blocked. Um, so give some love to Mark in the chat, guys. Please uh, switch the PC. And he says, "My youngest daughter Jessica just gave birth to a healthy baby girl. I am over the moon in tears and feeling even older." Yo, man, that is that is awesome. Congratulations to Grandpa. Should we say switch to Grandpa? <laughs> Switch to grandpa. Congratulations to happy grandpa. Switch to PC. Um, yeah, man, that's that's amazing. Healthy baby girl. Um, I have one baby girl myself, although she's <laughs> she's getting my daughter's getting big, man. She was like almost as tall as me. She's you know, you know, I'm five foot eight, five foot nine. She's getting tall, so um, I know how that feeling is. Well, not granddaughter feeling, but I know how uh, daughter feeling is. So it's uh, congratulations, congratulations. Um, uh, to Jessica, your youngest daughter, and a healthy baby girl, and a healthy baby girl. Congrats, man. Um, let's see here. Um, I have like 15 games on my U and three digital. Yeah. <laughs> um, was somebody asking about how what I live stream? Uh, who was it? Uh, Lu Speaking of uh, J Two Blue with the two dollar donation, he says, "Speaking of Fire Emblem, can you play Lost?" Oh, I don't think we. Th I think this is the first time that we've ever got a Lost in Thought uh, request. Yo, I know. I think it really is the first time that we've ever got a Lost in Thought request. Okay, shout out to J Two Blue. We don't get a lot of Fire Emblem music requests because I play so much Fire Emblem during my videos. I think people just don't request Fire Emblem. <laughs> all right, Lost in Thought all alone. Nice. Um, there were times, man, where I actually, uh, I, I, I pretty much was like, I almost like cried myself to sleep pretty much, uh, when I play Fire Emblem, not because of the, a, a mixture of the game and also just like my, my, my life. It was just times I'd just be like playing and I'd be so tired and I just start like, and I just close the 3DS and I just go to sleep. <laughs> It, it, the only thing that kept me going once again was my daughter and and just fight like the next round of fire emblem after work like i would play fire emblem for like three hours before i went to sleep i finished work around 10 o'clock and then i play like fire emblem to like one you know my daughter would i put my daughter to sleep and then i just go to sleep and just be sad I mean, <laughs> all right lost in thought all alone um I'm gonna turn down the volume because there's lyrics in this one. So. It's the full version. Uh, that is my fourth grandchild. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Player Essence. <laughs> All right. Fourth, grand fourth grandchild. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. The fourth one. How many boys and how many girls? Oceans, 
Dang, that's sad. Yeah, it was pretty sad. But there's people that had it worse than me, guys. Let's not make it seem as if I was freaking starving. I was out on the street. Nobody cared for me. I had nothing to live for. It wasn't that. It was just my whole life I'd been used to always being in control for the most part. Well, not always being in control, but like having hope and a direction. And I think that was the first time in my life that I had no, I had like the, the smallest glimmer of hope for like myself personally that I've ever had in my life. That was probably like the, I, I've always had confidence. Obviously I'm a pretty confident person, but that was the, that was the time that I probably had the littlest confidence that I've ever had in my life. It was, it was horrible. Yeah, sometimes you gotta, sometimes it's good to cry yourself to sleep, man. Sometimes it's good. Then you wake up like, okay. it's o And then you wake up and you're like, you know what? It's okay. I'm alive another day. This day can always be different from the next day. You know what I'm saying? Like this day can always be different from the next day. So that that's what, that's basically my, my thought process was, was that like, let me go to the next day. Let's see what happens, you know? And it took a, it took more than a year. But, you know, I actually ended up getting a really good job, you know, and things changed for me for pretty much. I haven't I've never had the same mentality since 2014. But like I said, I'll have an edited video where it's not like broken up like this. But uh, yeah, 2014 was when things really started changing around for me. And then ever since then, it's been pretty good. You know, I can't ever since then, the life's been pretty good. I can't complain. There's been there's been bumps here and there. There's been huge bumps. But never as low as I've never as low. Like if you were to put my confidence on a one to ten, you know, like usually my confidence is like at a ten or a nine. Back in 2013, my confidence was like at like a two. You know, it was horrible. OJ, uh, Capcom logic is whack. Explain why DM2, uh, DMC2 sucks. It just does, man. I don't need to explain. I don't want to waste time to talk about that. Um, Dank Beam Center says, what's my favorite Fire Emblem game? My favorite Fire Emblem game is Fire Emblem Awakening. Um, Pizza Wolf says, player since, um, hey OJ, just joined. Quick question, what's the difference between a Western RPG and a JRPG? Uh, where it's developed. If it's developed by a company here in Europe, or in the US, Europe, or anywhere outside of Japan, then it's, uh, it's a Western RPG. Um, Western developers can make a Japanese style RPG though, and vice versa. It's not exclusive to to that though so there can be western developers that make a japanese style rpg which would be traditional turn-based and things like that but mainly what it what it usually means is that where the, the the companies are at and the style like you know and just like the game like where it was developed at um but generally speaking it's kind of complicated i guess right but generally speaking it's the type of style of the game usually turn-based uh action-based but you can pretty you can see the differences between western and uh, Japanese RPGs, usually in the story style, uh, the gameplay. Um, Western RPGs like to do one man, one man army. There's like a lot of one man army Western Japanese RPGs, like The Witcher or like one or two man armies. Whereas Japanese RPGs usually always have a party, overarching huge story of the world ending, you know, something like that. Whereas like Western RPGs usually have it to where it's like there's like an evil person that wants to just like monopolize a country or something like it's not like it's like the world's gonna end whereas japanese rpg a lot of time it's like the world is going to end you know so that's an, also another difference like not saying that western rpgs haven't done that like mass effect is a western rpg where it's like literally the like the world will end you know so western rpgs can do that as well but just generally speaking like a lot of western rpgs it, it's not like that you know but that's pretty much the difference. I know that was hard to explain, but that's pretty much the difference. But generally speaking, if it's in Japan, then you know it's going to be a Japanese RPG if, if, if it's from there. If it's made in the West, Europe, uh, America, Canada, then it's it's, good. it's a Western RPG. You know? Although, like I said, Western developers can make Japanese-style RPGs. We, we've seen it. We've actually seen a lot of it. There, there are Western developers who make Japanese-style RPGs. Like Cosmic Star Heroine. That is... That's a Japanese style RPG, but it's Western made, you know? Uh, shout outs to Jumpmon with the, oh snap! Jumpmon with the $2, um, the $2 donation and also Jazzy M with the merch girls! Let's go, Jazzy! And Bino, merch boys! He says merch boys and girls will post the fix once they arrive. 
woman's purple tank and two other merch items shout outs yo thank you guys so much i appreciate the merch the merch purchases merch girls the purple tanks are absolutely amazing jazzy you are gonna look is that for you jazzy the, the purple tank you're gonna look great in them i saw your first video good job on your first video jazzy <laughs> you look just a little bit nervous but i can tell but you're getting i think your camera presence is already a million times better than mine you you guys want to watch my first videos um um yeah i mean yeah welcome to another video um i just like the nintendo that's my favorite company um yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. <laughs> My videos are horrible. So <laughs> you're already much better than I am. You know, you're already much better than I am. So <laughs> shout outs and thank you for the donation. Thank you. Or thank you for the, 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 the multiple merch purchases. I do appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to play Aerith's theme. Um, thank you for the lost and thought all alone. That made me feel better. That made me feel good when you played that or when you asked for that song. So, Aerith. Aerith's theme. Let's see here. Player since is it time for another story time? Uh no, unless you guys want it. Um Divinity Original Sin 2. Yeah, uh, Kofi K. Yeah, that's definitely like a, you know, like a JRPG but western developed. Absolutely. <laughs> uh no problem, Jazzy. No problem. Also, yeah, 3 out of 3 merch goal. Three out of three merch goal for the night. Shout outs. <laughs> three out of three merch goals. So, okay. So, I guess that's why somebody's asking about a story time. So, um, what, for, for hitting the merch goal, um, what type of story do you guys want to hear? You guys want to hear, um, I can give you guys a college football story. I think this one's pretty funny. What they did to me when I was in college for when I played football. I can give you guys one of those. So, <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. I can give you a couple of those. Let's go Comedy Essence. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, when I was in um when I was in high school and when I was in college, um I think I'm not sure what I was thinking, but I decided to uh because like, I had like a like I could grow like a big afro back in the day. Now I can't really grow anything more than past this right here. But back in the day, I used to be able to grow a pretty nice sized afro. And for some reason, I didn't want to cut my hair. I wanted to have braids, or I wanted to just have long hair, ponytail, whatever it was. So, but the only problem was that it looked kind of funky. Like it looked kind of funky. And I did this in high school too. And like, so there'd be times where I would just leave my hair, but I would like condition it to where it was like down. So I either look like a really funky looking version of like Andre 3000 or just a black dude with a lampshade on his head. You know what I'm saying? So it was either one of the, but it, and it wasn't Andre 3000. He looked a lot better. So it wasn't that. So it was more towards the side of a lampshade. So people would call me like lampshade or just like laugh at my hair. So, trust me, it didn't look good. <laughs> so, um, there was a time that I went to, um, like, when I was in college and I was playing football. And um, I had the hair like that. Like, I had my hair, um, no, tied back. And all they did was make fun of me. Like, one dude called me, like, a wolf boy. Because, like, like, we had a bunch of black people from, like, New Orleans and, and uh, Florida and stuff. So, then all they did was just make fun of me the whole time. Now, a separate time, <laughs> like I wasn't a starter or anything like that, but there was a separate time that um, I was like practicing really hard. I was trying to make a name for myself. I was playing scout team and I might have told the story once, but I'll say it again. And I went and I hit the starting running back pretty hard. Like I kind of crushed him out of bounds 
And um, it was a legal play. Like, we were going, and I hit him, and he went flying. Just because, I don't know if he thought I was going to hit him or not, because I was also a running back, but I was just playing scout team. And, like, some of the linemen and some of the people on the team took took offense to that. Um, I didn't hit him low, either. I hit him high. Um, and so, basically, what happened is that they kind of, like, banked that. And then, one time when I came in to get changed and everything for pra- before practice, like, there would seem to be less people than usual. And what they did is that um, at that time, I was pretty kind of, you know, I wasn't the biggest guy and we had these huge lockers. So what they did is that they took me, the big big defensive lineman, they took me and they put me in the locker. Like they forced me into the locker like physically and locked the locker and locked it. And then I didn't make it to practice. They're like, oh, yeah, now you can't be like a practice All-American when you're inside this locker all day. And I was like, or all all during practice. And I was like, oh, well, that's that's true because I'm not going to be at practice. <laughs> so then they locked me in that locker and kept me in there. So I was in that locker for approximately an hour and a half before a coach found me, before a coach was like asking where, you know, where's OJ? Where's OJ at? And um, everybody, I guess, was there was like laughing or wasn't saying anything. And then they realized that something happened and they went and they sent like one of the assistants to go into the locker room to see where I was. And I was in the locker just sitting like just kind of just scrunched in there like I'm in a locker like I've never been in a locker locked in a locker in my life. But I was just sitting there scrunched in a locker for an hour and a half. And it was horrible. My locker smelled like crap because of my football gear. So it was horrible. So they took my football gear out. They took my football gear, they threw it in the showers, okay, and then they locked me in the locker for about a good hour and a half. So, so yeah, it smelled like it smelled horrible, and I was inside the locker for that long. So that wasn't fun. But <laughs> that's just one of the football stories that I have. I was in, the coach was like, he's like, "What's your combination? Let me get you out." I told him my combination. He's like, "What are you doing in the locker?" I'm like, "I got locked in a locker, coach." <laughs> He asked me, like, dude, dude asked me, like, I, like, I had a choice. Like, I put myself in the locker and then somehow reached through the, the little tiny, like, the little uh, square air holes to put my hand through there and lock myself in my own locker. Dude was like, what are you doing in the locker? Like, as if it was my fault. I said, dude, I got locked in the locker. Like, <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Um, um, actually, I did start punching dudes, if you want me to be honest. When they started, they, they, well, it was, it was a surprise, but imagine three people coming at you six foot, six foot three, six foot four, six foot one, and you being five foot eight, five foot nine, a hundred, 189 pounds or 190 pounds. That's about the size I was during junior college uh, at that point. Um, and imagine three of them grabbing you, some of the strongest guys on the team, you know what I'm saying? They're stronger than me, all of them grabbing you and literally forcing you physically into a locker. There's nothing that I could do because I got caught by surprise. They, they didn't give me any warning. I just got grabbed. I got restrained quickly. And I got like I was like trying to budge to not put me in there. But they overpowered. They overpowered me. There's three of them versus one of me. If it was just one of them, I would have been able to get away. But it was three of them. So I couldn't do anything. I tried to punch though. I was like, Ugh! I was like <laughs> Wolverine or something. <laughs> I never struggled so hard in my life. But yeah, man. Um, he said I'm a pacifist. <laughs> yeah, human pretzel. Yeah, I was kind of. It was like a, it was like it was like this. It was like there wasn't enough room for me to even be like this. It was like I was literally just like I scrunched and my feet were up. Like my feet, I was like packed. My back hurt too. Um. So yeah. Football story, human pretzel essence, <laughs> rage essence, <laughs> stuffed essence, locked up essence. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. That's funny. Throwing hands essence. Yeah, getting getting put in a locker essence. Um, yeah, so after that, um, I didn't really stay on the team too much longer after that. Um, I was I didn't stay for the bowl game. Because it was pretty much towards the end of the season. So I think I missed the bowl game. But I was there for the, the whole regular season. But the, I, I did miss the uh, the play or the playoffs. The playoff bowl game or whatever it was. I did miss. I missed that. Uh, so I was just like, you know what? I'm, I think I'm good. I wasn't a starter anyway. I wasn't going to play. So I was like, I think I'm good. Um, Unleash Furious Francis. Yeah, I should have. 
Uh, Pizza Wolf says, Plurus says, what do you want to see in Octopath 2? I haven't even finished Octopath 1 yet, so I have no idea. Locker Essence. <laughs> uh, put your essence in your locker. <laughs> Foot Locker Essence. Um... Um, Ariel says, Plurus says, that sucks what happened to you. I actually, uh, I actually did close my, uh, close myself in a locker once. It, it didn't lock, though, and I was only 5 foot and 98 pounds. <laughs> yeah. You would have had a nice, much nicer fit in our locker, in, in the locker. It would have been a much nicer fit. Uh, <laughs> um, if you guys have a question, ask me. A, uh, you guys have a question about Michael O'Brien? You have a question about RPGs or a story about RPGs? Let me know. Just tag me, and I'll be able to see it easier. Bravely 3 better come before Octo 2. I don't think Octo 2 is going to come anytime soon. I think Octo 2 would be like a game that comes out like in the next like two years. I think Bravely would come out maybe next year. Mm, excuse me. Reminiscent Essence. <laughs> um... The shout outs. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been very, uh, very generous today with the memberships and the merch boys and girls. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the story. Um, let's see. Uh, Cyrex says, um, I'm probably going to return to licking cartridges. Uh, Devbert says, uh, would you debate Black Bond? No, I wouldn't debate Black Bond going forward. No, not really. Um, Cy uh, S, S Cyrex? Sorry, I can't say your name. This person who would your worst JRPG boss to deal with? Who was my worst JRPG boss to deal with? Um, the Ethereal Queen. Um, Ethereal Queen is from a line of Square Enix games. Uh, Star Ocean, Valkyria, uh, Valkyrie Profile, those games have the Ethereal Queen in there. And she is the biggest B-word. Dude, she's horrible. The e If you deal with the Ethereal Queen in any of those line of games, she's horrible. The Ethereal Queen is horrible. And the reason why the Ethereal Queen is horrible is because you have to go through like the random lost dungeon to get to there. And there's no save points. Like You have to just go through... Wave after wave after wave of dungeon towers till you get to the very top, and then the Ethereal Queen is waiting there for you. And like you know, you're doing fine. And then all of a sudden, she just decides to go Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct Goku Blue Goku Super Saiyan God, and she just destroys you. Like the strategy that I had to use to beat the Ethereal Queen was ridiculous. Like it was absolutely. Ridiculous. Shout outs to Wiggy Man's Den for the subscription. Thank you so much, homie. Welcome to the village. You guys give some shout outs, give some loves, give some headbands, some emotes for my boy. Um, but yeah, the Ethereal Queen was absolutely horrible. Um, absolutely horrible. Like, I had to use a strategy. Uh, basically, in Star Ocean, uh, it was Star Ocean 4 for the Xbox 360. Um, you can have people auto battle because the game is an action RPG, but you can also control people manually. So what I had to do is that the Ethereal Queen, she has this like after you get like half of her HP down or something like that, she has this like super area attack that no matter what level you're at, you're gonna die in one hit. Like I was super high, like I was like, like that game you can like level up to like 250. I was like max level in that game, and um, like I had to basically put my characters in manual and put them on all four corners of the screen. So the Ethereal Queen can only kill them one by one with her super attack. So I had to, this is what I had to do, guys. I had to put them all in four corners and then just basically fight with one character and have them attack her. Her do her super attack, they die, get my healer, heal that person, then she goes to the next person and then basically just rotate. She was just killing my people one by one and I'd have to just rotate, heal, heal them, get them back to life and then start fighting her. So it was just a very tedious process. And a very hard strategy to even deal with in the first place. But yeah, it was it was horrible. I hate Ethereal Queen. Like she's she's horrible. Um, um Yeah, the, the Smash Leak, yeah, it's stupid. Um favorite RPG game on the Switch? Uh Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Octopath so far. Uh what are the lesser known JRPGs that you would like to have remade for the Switch? Uh like Secret of Man. I guess that's not less a lesser known, but like Secret of Evermore. I think, like, uh, and maybe Breath of Fire isn't, like, a lesser known, but I'd love a Breath of Fire remake. Um, I'd love to see uh, something from, like, um, like the GameCube, some of, like, re like some of those, uh, the RPGs, like, like Skies of Arcadia. Uh, I'd love to see that being, uh, that would be awesome for a remake in that game. So there's lots of, there's lots of cool stuff that they can remake. Um, I know what you meant, um, Ethan. I know that you meant stupid. Yeah, I, I got you. <laughs> Uh, Michael O'Brien says, uh, we are talking about the importance of stories in RPGs. I think RPG has, um, our RPG has to have a compelling 
uh, story to work. And if it doesn't that have that, the RPG an RPG fails. I mean, I wouldn't say that. Maybe it'll fail for you, but I don't think a compelling story is necessarily needed if the gameplay or the combat is really good. Because most of the time in an RPG, you're going to be fighting. You're going to be doing the combat. Um, so you need to make sure that the gameplay is really good. Now, obviously, an, RP, an RPG, the story is really important too but i do think that the battle system and gameplay have to be really top notch in order for an rpg to really work well because that's what you're going to be doing most of the time you're not going to be watching story elements most of the time you're going to be fighting you're going to be leveling up you're going to be getting new skills and if that sucks then there's going to be a problem so i would say the battle system is more important but um a nice uh, a story definitely needs to be there because otherwise people are going to lose interest um a lot of the times it's hard to usually when you have a really good battle system you have a halfway decent story so you know it can make up for it but there really aren't a lot of games that have like horror that like, have like, amazing stories but like just god awful battle systems there's not a lot of rpgs like that in general so thankfully for us that most of the time it's pretty it's pretty good you know you, you get a good either the story's not very good and the, the gameplay is not very good or the gameplay is really good and the story's halfway decent or good enough you know or the story's really good and the, the battle system might not be the best but it's good enough so um you are Dr. Mario. You're saving lives. All right. Top content as usual. Got to drop and put my son to bed later, Village. All right. Take it easy, NR Mary. Thanks for coming out to the stream, homie. Appreciate that. Um, really appreciate it. Smash Le the Smash Leaks video was funny. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you thought it was funny. I, I put a couple jokes in there. Uh, OJ, PUBG Duos. Let's get it in. Yeah, man. PUBG Duos. I actually have a copy of PUBG that I'll be giving away. Uh, so look forward to that. I got a copy of PUBG with my Xbox One X, and it's literally been sitting in that box. Oh, it's actually it's actually up there sitting in my Xbox One Xbox for a while now. And I just forgot about it until you mentioned something. So, yeah, I got a copy of PUBG that I'll probably be giving away via Gleam. Um, OJ, did you fight uh, Dark Fact in Ease, in Ease 1? No, not yet. No. Star Ocean until the end of time was my first experience um, in the franchise in place, uh, place about 350 hours. Yeah, I think I put Star Ocean, um, Star Ocean 4. Um, I put like... I put around 400 hours into that game. So, yeah, I was right around the same same as you, Be More. Um, let's see. Pizza Wolf says, um, is Zelda an RPG? I don't think it is. Um, um, but, but, but I see an exploration action game with some puzzle and light RPG elements. Yeah, some people think it's a an RPG, but I don't think Legend of Zelda is an RPG. There's, I mean, it doesn't have intrinsic leveling in Zelda. So that's the problem that I have with the game. Um, for me, for an, an RPG, you have to have intrinsic leveling. You have to, I think the, the main factor in an RPG is like, do you get, like, you fight the enemy, you get the little number that pops up or it says you got this experience, you get that experience, you level up, you get new skills or you get new abilities based on that. Legend of Zelda doesn't, doesn't intrinsically have that. It has stuff that you can upgrade any like okay i'm going to upgrade this piece of equipment for like a higher level but it has no intrinsic leveling within enemies like when you you can kill five gabillion moblins in a row and you're not going to get a new skill from leveling up you know what i'm saying so that's one of the problems with zelda i don't think it's a role-playing game and there's you don't travel with the party you know you don't i mean you don't do that i mean zelda's i mean i would love to see a real zelda rpg you give me you give me a high quality, real like action RPG Zelda where you can use Princess Zelda, you can use Link, you can use other characters. Like, dude, I would be that would be my dream for them to take the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild engine and make a hardcore action RPG out of the Legend of Zelda. That would be the best Zelda game. That would be my dream Zelda game. That's that's like you are my dream. Uh, you know, but I don't know if they'll ever do that. I mean, they did it with Zelda 2. Is like an RPG, so I mean they've done it before, so I'm not gonna say and say that they they get they're never gonna do it, but that's what I would want. I would want a real Zelda action RPG, like a real hardcore Zelda action RPG. That would be that'd be so good. That'd be so good. <laughs> it'd be so good. I do not know how to say that name. Let's see. Can you play uh, Mizu uh, Mizutsune? Mitsusune? Mitsusune? Theme from Monster Hunter. I can play that. Absolutely. Let's go. Mm. Thank you for the donation, Aron. Appreciate that. Maybe a paper Zelda as an RPG take on the set. No, I don't want any. I don't want a paper Zelda. I don't want. I don't want Link looking like paper. I'm not a fan of like the. I don't want paper. Paper Zelda. No, I'm good. 
Um, I'm good on that, but, you know, just get me a real hardcore action, action RPG, Zelda action RPG. Be completely down for that, man. Completely down for that. Um, I have the copy of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu pre-ordered. The game is about uh, my first experience of grief. What game? Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your grandfather dying in 99. Sorry about that, man. Okay, Ocarina of Time. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Sorry to hear about that, but I'm glad that a game can, you know, help you get through that hard time. Remake Zelda 2 for Switch. I would. I don't know if I want a remake of Zelda 2 for Switch, because I hate Zelda 2. I would just like a real hardcore RPG Zelda, where you have, like, a party group, you have real leveling. Like, imagine going through Hyrule and actually having an action RPG. That, that's what I, I, would, I would love for that to happen. Like, that would just be the greatest thing. I would love for that to happen. Uh, they have a Zelda RPG. It's called Ease. Yeah, Ease is, Ease is very Zelda-ish at times and how it looks, but it's not like Link. It's not like Legend of Zelda items and characters and weapons and all that, you know? You ever listen to L Lit RPG? Uh, no, I don't know what that is. Red or listen? No, I haven't. OJ, you choose by Team Pikachu. I'm, I'm probably going to be getting both versions, though. Pretty on ice says, player, since I heard the Torna, the Torna Titan is five times bigger than Gor Gormat, the Xenoblade expansion is going to be lit. Um, yeah, man. Um, I don't know if the world's going to be as big as all rest, all, all of it. Like, I don't know if they're going to have everything, but it's going to be lit, dude. I'll tell you that, it's going to be lit. Yo, uh, El Chupacabra, what's up, man? Welcome back. Uh, Big Mo 375 says, players, says, do you like Secret of Mana, and would you want a remake on the Switch? I don't know. I mean, I don't. I mean, I would like the remake on the Switch just because, but it's not like I'm gonna be like, oh my god, like I want the like remake so much. But I'm, yes, I do like Secret of Mana. Secret of Mana is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Um, Kingdom Hearts boss. Okay, yeah, man. Uh, shout outs to uh, Brony Nerd two two five with the subscription. Thank you so much, Brony Nerd. Welcome to the Elite Ninja Village of Player Essence. This is the greatest channel. In the world so thank you so much you guys got those emotes if you're a new member you're a sponsor spam those emotes for my boy brony nerd welcome the, you know what the funny thing is i just purchased the last remnant on pc for nine dollars uh pizza wolf says player since one of my friends said skyrim isn't an rpg is it is it though one of I, I would consider that person not a friend anymore. I, I would highly consider you not being friends with them anymore because they're not very intelligent and you don't want to hang around people that aren't intelligent. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, no, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Skyrim's an RPG. You level up, you get new... You hit enemies. Each enemy gives you experience. You level up, you get new skills and abilities. Has an overarching story. Skyrim is the definition, is the true definition of a Western RPG. There's, there's, there's actually, I would say this. There's not a lot of RPGs that are truer RPGs. Skyrim is a hardcore RPG. It is there's, there's no, there's no doubt about that. Like I don't, but like I said, you're not hanging around somebody that's very, like that's very, like for him to say that either he's closed minded. Or he doesn't know what he's talking about. So you got to be careful about hanging around people like that. That say things like that. Unless he's just joking. Unless he's a friend that's... Okay, let me get serious here. Unless he's just joking with you. You got to be careful about hanging around with people that insist on those type of things. Like if you don't... Like if they're not smart enough to just do the basic research. Like if he's being for real, really consider actually hanging around people like that. Okay? Uh, because people like that necessarily aren't going to give you great advice. Or they'll give you bad advice. Or they'll tell you things that's not true. Because if this dude can't tell that Skyrim is an RPG... That there's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Then there's a problem. Like I said, I think he's probably joking with you. Pizza Wolf, I don't know if he's serious. Because that'd be like me saying, oh, you know what? Well, you know, Link doesn't swing a sword, you know, in Legend of Zelda at times. Like, Link doesn't swing a sword, you know. At, at, yeah, he does swing a sword. He does swing a sword at times. Sometimes he swings a sword. Sometimes he shoots a bow and arrow. I'd be saying, like, Link doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't adventure in Hyrule in, 
you know, in, in, in the games like Ogarina of Time, you know, or there's not a horse named opponent. It's just a flat out lie. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. So Skyrim is a hardcore RPG. It's one of the best RPGs ever created. I'd also add that it's one of the best RPGs ever created. I love Skyrim. I don't know why he would say something like that. That's stupid. It's really dumb. Um, unfriend essence. <laughs> Advice essence. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Skyrim is a quintessential Western RPG. That's a good. That's a good term for it. It's a quintessential Western RPG. I don't really think, when it comes to the rise of Western RPGs, I don't think there's really many other games that can beat Skyrim in the rise, the impact that it had. Skyrim really brought like, hey, Western RPGs are here. Like you can make crazy money on RPGs. Like that's what Skyrim did. Like because because before Mor Morrowind didn't do that. Uh, the Witcher didn't do that. I mean, obviously, The Witcher did really well, but The Witcher 3, but that was after Skyrim. Like, there were RPGs, but Skyrim was the RPG that came in and said, oh, okay, Japanese RPGs, we know that you guys can make a lot of money, Final Fantasy or whatever, but look what we have. That was the first one. Skyrim sold, like, insane amounts of copies. So, uh, yeah, Skyrim is the quintessential Western RPG, and, and I would say that it really started the Western RPG revolution um, from a mainstream uh, more of a bigger standpoint. Um, you had Mass Effect, which you can kind of say Mass Effect did that as well. Mass Effect in 2010, um, but not on the level of Skyrim. Not on the level of Skyrim. And Mass Effect 2 greatly nerfed the RPG elements from Mass Effect 1. Um, so there's also that to put into consideration is that Mass Effect 2 really nerfed a lot of the RPG elements. So it went light where Skyrim said, hey, we're going to go in more you know, with what you can do. Although some of the other games have some more stuff, but Skyrim has a lot like of flexibility within what you can do. Uh, dual wielding, lots of different stuff, uh, kind of maneuvering within, getting new skills and ability, having complete control of your character. Hey, you want to go sword and freaking fire? You can do it. You want to be a dark mage? You can do it. You want to be uh, somebody that can heal really well? You can do it. You want to be an assassin? You could like Skyrim gave you so many options to play the game, literally infinite replay value, so much content. I, I can't say enough good things about Skyrim. It is like, it, it's on the level of Japanese RPGs to me. It, it passes up all the other Western drivel that's out there. And it's really up on that level because you can do anything that you want. It is, you, you're you free. And that's why I like it a lot more than The Witcher. Like people talk about The Witcher being so good, but Skyrim gives you way more abilities than The Witcher. Like Skyrim gives you way more options than The Witcher. It's just, Skyrim's amazing. It's really good. Buy it. If you, if you haven't bought Skyrim on the Switch, go buy it on the Switch. It's it, it runs really well. It plays well on the Switch. It's it's a it's a great game. I I love Skyrim. It's really good. Um <laughs> it's really, really good. Um You think Final Fantasy is the best selling for games, to be honest. Most game of the years are Final Fantasy, Witcher, Skyrim, Breath of the Wild, Dragon Age, my favorite, uh, my favorite setting personally i mean i don't know what you say like, most game of the years like what do you mean by like the game awards like yeah if you talk about like, the game awards uh final fantasy doesn't really win game of the year anymore like <laughs> i mean it won my game of the year but that was just because it was kind of a little bit of a weak year for games overall um but final fantasy 15 but i mean like final fantasy doesn't even really win game of the year anymore you know but i would say that like um like the witcher yeah that's gonna win game of the year like dragon quest inquisition yeah that won game of the year from the game awards um although i think bayonetta 2 should have won game of the year but they gave it a dragon quest inquisition like whatever yeah, whatever um but i think bayonetta 2 should have won uh bayonetta 2 is the quint dragon age inquisition is not the quintessential western rpg it is not. It's just not the quintessential Western RPG. It is not. I don't think Dragon Age Inquisition is so memorable or the top of its class in Western RPGs. It was good that year. Don't get me wrong for what it is. But I think Bayonetta literally is the great. It, at the time that it was, it's the greatest action game, stylish action game ever created. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think there's another game that played better from a mechanic standpoint, from what you can do the action in there, the content. There wasn't another action game that's better. To me, at the time, it was the greatest action game ever made. I think still at this point, it's the greatest stylish action game. Not like regular action guys, not like Legend of Zelda and all that, but I mean like games like Devil May Cry, games like, you know, Bayonetta, obviously, games like the old God of War, because there used to be more games like that. I mean, um, so games like that, Ninja Gaiden, you could put Ninja Gaiden in there, you know, um, like it was the best of the best out of all of those type of games. And I, I felt it should have won. But hey, whatever. Um, 
Um, let's see, Zelda RPG with classes, dungeons, and party loot system, etc. could be great. But then I also like the aspect of Zelda, like we we have had exploring alone and solving puzzles by yourself. Well, here's the thing. I mean, they could make. I mean, here's like Nintendo is big enough to where they can make both. Like I don't see why we can't get a mainline Legend of Zelda, like the normal Legend of Zelda, and an RPG Legend of Zelda the next year. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't see why we can't get both. Like, at this point, I don't see why we can't get both. Like, I would love an RPG Legend of Zelda. We don't have to... It doesn't need to replace the mainline Legend of Zelda. Just like people are freaking out about Pokemon, let, Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee. That's not replacing the mainline Pokemon games. That's not replacing the main big RPG. But we can have both. There's room for both. There's room for two styles of RPGs. There's room for two styles of Zelda games. There's there's plenty of room. Bring, bring it on, man. Like, there's plenty of room. So, that's what I'm thinking. Um, you've played Skyrim on Switch for 200 hours. Yeah, I played Skyrim. If you want to like put total, like I put like 40, 50 hours on Skyrim on the Switch or something like that, and then I put like I put like 180 hours on the Xbox 360. So, um, bro, if you are right and they do both, it would be incredible. Yeah, man. I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you guys love that? Wouldn't you guys love like getting like a Legend of Zelda game, like every single like two years or year and a half to two years we get a legend of zelda game like oh we're getting like the new rpg legend of zelda oh we're getting the new dungeons puzzles and all of that zelda and what they can do is they can make the traditional zelda they can make that more of the dungeons for you guys because a lot of people who like traditional zelda they like dungeons and they don't like you know or they want dungeons back and then for people who want more of the rpg zelda okay then you have more of the open world zelda so they can make more of the traditional dungeons get lost puzzle solving all that crap that i'm not really super fond of of getting stuck in water temples and all that and doing puzzles i don't like legend of zelda puzzles i don't like getting stuck in legend of zelda games i i just i know that's what legend of zelda is about but i just i really don't like it i, I like the combat of legend of zelda i like getting the weapons and all that but i don't like the puzzles and i don't like getting stuck in legend of zelda it just it just it 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 triggers me when I get stuck in Legend of Zelda for some reason. Whenever I play the games, if I get stuck in a in a dungeon and I'm just running around and I don't know what to do, it really it just upsets me and I and I don't like it. Um, that's why I like Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild so much because it's more like what you would see in an open world RPG in a Skyrim. It's like okay, I'm free. Like I don't, I'm not, I'm not confined to these dungeons. I'm not, I don't, I I, I can do what I want. I can go. I can fight. Combat is important. It's really important. It's not all gimmicky. You can just fight enemies in a variety of ways. I don't have to sit there and hit different switches, then then pull a block, and then oh, then the enemy dies this way. Like I can just I can fight and play and battle the way that I want. That's what I love about Breath of the Wild. So I think if they just took the Breath of the Wild concept and ran with it and made that in like a really full out RPG, and then they went back to like the Ocarina of Time or Twilight Princess formula and just kind of ran with that, I think people would be would be fine you get you'll get more sales too people would buy people would buy both i'd still buy the legend of zelda game that i don't like <laughs> i would still buy the puzzle game that i don't like and play it and be frustrated i would still because i've played every zelda and beat pretty much all i'd be all the mainline zeldas guys i'd be all the mainline zeldas um out there so i'd still play it and beat it but i won't like it as much as the other zelda but that's fine I'll, you'll still get my money nintendo you know <laughs> you'll still get my money so so yeah Water Temple Essence. I hate the Water Temple. I was stuck like a month on that as a kid. <laughs> Square uh, Square Cross uh, Legend of Zelda. You know what? Yeah, if I had a... Yeah, that would probably be the development team that I'd pick. Like, if I could pick, like, a team to maybe even help out with Nintendo on that, it would probably be, like, Square Enix, like, to help out on that, like, a RP, like a RPG Legend of Zelda game. But, yeah. Hey, hey there, Velvety. How's it going? Good to see you here in the stream. Um, bro, um, Let's see here. I mean, Xenoblade is also kind of like that with two versions. You have X for exploration and world and uh, mainline and story. Well, no, Xenoblade, I wouldn't say it's it's like that because all the Xenoblade games all have, like, a similar type of battle system and, like, similar types of structure. Even with, like, the open world, like, you can treat Xenoblade, you can treat Xenoblade 2 like Xenoblade X, but it's just not as big. And it's just not as, you can't travel as fast, like, dude, but it still has really huge open segments. Now, not quite as, obviously, not as open world-ish. You still have to go to different Titans, but each of those places still are 
really large and have really big areas to go. I see what you're saying, though. I see what you're saying. But Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you can explore just as much as any other Xenoblade game. And Xenoblade Chronicles, or Xenoblade Chronicles, the original, huge areas to where you can explore, too. So they all have the same theme. Um, obviously, one are done a little bit better. But what I'm saying is that, like, having, like, a completely different style, like... Like, because, like, there's a, there's a number of Nintendo Legend of Zelda fans that, like, don't like Breath of the Wild style. Like, oh, well, I want my dungeons back, you know? It's like, and I'm like, dude, screw dungeons like that. Like, I screw getting lost in dungeons. You know, I don't, I don't want to get lost in dungeons. It's not fun. You know, so, like, that's why the, I like the shrines. Because it's like, okay, if you get lost, whatever. Just get the hell out of the shrine. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to be in that shrine. If I don't want to be in the shrine, I don't need to have whatever, whatever's in there. I don't need it to beat the game. I don't need it. You know, it's not essential. Whereas, like... The dungeons in Legend of Zelda, they're, like, essential. Although, there's, like, the four, like, you know, the the beasts or whatever, you know, uh, that you have to go into. And those are kind of, like, dungeons. But even those aren't, like, anything crazy like we've seen before. So, I mean, like, there's clearly... There, I mean, there's people that like both. But for me, like, I'd be fine if they took Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and they made... If they made Breath of the Wild into an RPG, that'd be fine. And then they take, like, anything else and then, like, Ocarina of Time and say, okay, let's make Ocarina... Let's make, like, Ocarina of Time 2. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, like... The actual story wise but let's just make let like remember like the structure for ocarina of time remember what they did for that and how dungeons were and everything let's just make that but a new game or like twilight princess that's like ocarina of time as well right so let's just make that and make a new game i'd be fine with them doing that and then they do their own thing and then breath of the wild style that goes into its own completely new rpg i'd be fine with that and like we just get we just get more zelda games now you know like so i mean that's what i, I mean, that's what i want them to do so that's just me um Big S says players since they should re resurrect Star Tropics since it's the only other game to use uh, use a Zelda engine. Yeah, Star Tropics is really old though, really old. I don't know what they can do with it, but if they did it, I'd be down. I'd be down to play. Um, Soft content says players since uh, you think Monosoft could make a great Golden Sun game. Monosoft can make a great Golden Sun game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tether Gaming says uh, Sword is it Sword Art Online or S S slash O to players since my favorite part of the night. Um, okay, shout outs, dude. Oh, shout outs. It's a S slash O. That's shout outs. Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, Tether Gaming. Thank you for joining me, man. I really do appreciate uh, you being here. Dragon Age Inquisition port to the Nintendo Switch. It's EA, so that's not going to happen. Um, uh, but don't be talking about Classic 3 Zelda. No, I said they should They should make... Because think about it, guys. Like, if they really can focus in... Because, like, one of the reasons why, uh, you know, uh, Numa... Anuma-san said that, like, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild doesn't have, like, the dungeons like it had normally is because they wanted people to explore the open world. They don't want people to be lost in dungeons all day and not explore the open world. Like, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is already a huge game with tons of content. Like, if they had that huge open world and they had all the big dungeons that you get lost in, you can't do both at the same time. You're going to you're gonna get, you know, it's going to be it's gonna be fragmented. You're going to have long stints that you're not out in the open world. And they wanted you to explore the wild. They wanted you to be out in the, you know, with the rain and, and the problems and all the different stuff in the cold. They wanted you to explore and be part of it if you're in dungeons all day then you're not going to be part of the wild you know what i'm saying so that's the reason why there wasn't the dungeons like they were because they wanted you to be outside that was the focus of the game now some people have been saying like i, I think i heard like rob from Mulu 2 review he's like a big zelda fan as well he's like oh well they can do like a big open world and they can do big dungeons and i'm like how's that gonna work because breath of the wild that that was what they wanted you to be there you can't have a bunch of dungeons that are huge and you get lost in and then also a huge open world you get lost in that like like the game structure is going to be off. You have to have a main theme for your game. Like so, that's why I said it sounds good on paper, but in all like when they try to make the game, they're like, okay, well, how much, how many hours are they going to spend in this dungeon? How much time are they going to spend in dungeons? How many time, are they, how much time are they going to spend out in the, you know, out braving the the wild, out in the wild, you know, like or in the open world? That's why, if you notice, like you look at the the structure of like. Twilight Princess. There's not a ton of stuff to do out in Hyrule Field. You know what I'm saying? Or in, in, in Hyrule, there's, it's not like you're, there's a ton of different things like Breath of the Wild to do outside. It's just kind of like a hub world. That's how a lot of Legend of Zelda games have been. They're they're just like the the Hyrule Field is just like a hub world to the dungeons, and that's where you spend a lot of your time, and you spend a lot of time in your towns and dungeons, not. And Hyrule Field doing events and activities. You just use that to get from one place to another. There's a few secrets here and there that you can find, a few small little areas, but nothing like, you know, Breath of the Wild, where like that is where the main, like a lot of the game is in, out there, you know, um, outside doing stuff. So um, that's why I think that it would be better if they just split. If they just split it, we got a we got a timeline split here. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's see here. Uh, my favorite Naruto Shippuden opening, um, probably like a, a 
Uh, distance is really good, so I think that's the second opening, and then um, the one, the opening with uh, where with uh, where Shikamaru, Shikamaru, and uh, and Hidan are fighting, and um, Asuma, Asuma's fighting Hidan. That opening, I forgot what the name of. It. I think it's opening three. That opening is really good, um, and also like the Sha La La. That opening, that opening's good. So there's a lot of good openings. I don't know which, one, but maybe maybe distance or the the one the one right after the third opening number three. Those two are probably my favorite. Opening number two and number opening number two and number three. Those are my favorite. Um, uh, big S's. Uh, they resurrected Kid Icarus after a really long time. That's true. They did. They did. They did resurrect Kid Icarus. Um, El Toro Spaces. Uh, they would. Uh, uh, that would ruin the flow of gameplay if they did both. Yeah, exactly. It would ruin the flow of gameplay. That, that's what I said to Rob. That's what I said to Rob. I was like, dude, if they had like huge dungeons and also a huge open world, that's just gonna ruin the flow. You're gonna be you're gonna be in dungeons half the time. You're not gonna be in the open world. Open world. You're not gonna be inside dungeons. It's just gonna. It can't do both. You gotta you gotta pick. You gotta kind of pick. Um, uh, let's see here. The Breath of the Wild engine is seriously incredible. I feel like they could use it for other games like Animal Crossing or Pokemon. Um, I'm not sure if I want want them to use it for like Animal Crossing <laughs> or a Pokemon. I mean, I think they should just use it for like another Zelda game. That should be like use it for your your Zelda games going forward. Like take that engine and just use it for Zelda games. You know, that can be like the Zelda engine. You know, that they can use. Um, so yeah. Um. Oh yeah, Bluebird's really good. Is Bluebird? Is wait, Bluebird? That might be opening number three, isn't it? I don't know. I forget. I I listen to them when I go to the gym, though, so I, I forget. It's all mixed up to me. I watched Naruto Shippuden a long time ago, so I don't hear the openings a lot. So, my favorite mecha game. Um, favorite mecha game. Uh. Probably like the old school like front missions, man. Those were really good. I love the old school front missions. Those were those were awesome. I'm trying to think any other was there any other mo more modern mecha games? Uh yeah, old school front mission. Those were good. Uh you know, speaking of Final Fantasy games, uh what are your favorites? Uh my favorite Final Fantasy is probably Final Fantasy seven. That's probably my favorite Final Fantasy. And then Final Fantasy VI. No, Final Fantasy VI and Final Fantasy VII are probably my favorite Final Fantasies. Final Fantasy XII is really good, too, but I, I need to play more of it. Yeah, Bluebird. Bluebird's good. That's a really good opening. Uh, Damon Cross Machina. Damon X Machina. Yeah, that might be my new favorite mech game. That might be my new favorite mech game, you know? So, yeah, man. Mech Warrior. I think I played Mech Warrior when I was at like uh, the player one, the old school one or whatever. When I um, but no, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what Mech Warrior. So I'm not sure if I've played it or not. But I might have. I might have. Naruto Shippuden. Uh, no, Naruto opening. Oh, okay, three is Bluebird. Yeah, Bluebird's really good, dude. Bluebird's really good. I like Bluebird. It's good. I remember I did a I, when I was in when I was in college I did a I did um I did like a I did like a, a, a communications project on Naruto Shippuden and like I think there was a track that played Boo Bird and everybody because like in the class nobody obviously nobody watches Naruto like I did and they started laughing at the music and I was like what are you what the hell are you guys laughing at this is like the best song ever made <laughs> I saw so it confused me when people started laughing I was like what what's wrong with the music <laughs> oh man. Um, Michael uh, Michael O'Brien says, uh, "Do you think the next Zelda game will use Breath of the Wild engine uh, and the and versions of Link and Zelda? I think there's a lot of story to tell there, um, and and Junior could uh, could be made by twenty. Oh, I don't know what you said there, and J Jr. could be made by twenty two zero one. I don't know what you meant there." Um, but I think I see what you're saying at the beginning. Um, yeah, I think that they've already. I think uh, Numa San has said that yeah, they're going to use Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild's engine for, like for the next game. So I think they've already kind of uh, settled on that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Sakon Ten says yeah, uh, Bandai Namco is being silly again. They're asking us to port beg. 
I mean, for One Piece World Seeker. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not poor begging for One Piece World Seeker. The thing that the thing that kind of made me upset is that Nintendo everything said, "Oh, well, you know what, guys? You know, maybe the, this can happen because like we port begged for, we asked for for Dragon Ball Fighters, and that happened. They made it. Some, that's not. That's not how we got Dragon Ball Fighters. That's the only thing I had to. So basically, encouraging port begging by by writing stuff in your website, which no port begging didn't get us Dragon Ball Fighters on the Nintendo Switch. The over half a million people that bought Xenoverse Two, give them credit, not pe- not random people over the internet who you don't even know have receipts that actually giving them money. That was the people that got it. Was Dragon Ball Xenoverse Two owners? Those are the people that should be getting credit, not random b- port beggars on the internet. We don't know if they have Dragon Ball Xenoverse. We don't know if they're actually paying money. They don't got any receipts. They're just out there saying something, you know. So no, I'm not gonna give credit to them. I'm gonna give credit to. The, the people who bought Xenoverse 2 and like I said the Bandai Namco and the Nintendo Switch sales itself Nintendo or Bandai Namco already told everybody that they already put more resources into developing into putting you know Switch projects out so so nah man I, 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 with, I, I ain't down with that I, I, I didn't like the article I didn't like the article they wrote um, Prince Girl says uh, Polaris is my worst JRPG boss is, is it e- E-Ray? From Final Fantasy X, I hated that boss so much. I never, I never finished the game. Oh well, they, I, I, I actually have Final Fantasy X and X two, like the HD remastered on the PS4, and I have not. I like, I played like the first ten minutes of it. <laughs> um, not Final Fantasy. I meant Final Fantasy is just the setting and genre. For I don't remember your question or what you're talking about, Pizza Wolf. Um, let's see. Uh, probably since I've drank too much, uh, I had a long poker night <laughs> tonight. Uh, nice poker night. I meant that I think that it could be made by 2020 if I use the same engine, same system. Well, it just depends. They might not want to make it by 2020. They might want to wait some more. So it just depends. Uh, it, it, it just it really just depends. Uh, we'd have to wait and see. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. We don't know what they want to put in. Sometimes it might take longer. You never know. Um. Boise says, uh, "Do you think Nintendo could implement an a 3D arena fighter for Smash, or would it be too much work or take too much time?" Yeah, that would that would be too much work. A 3D arena fighter for Smash, like would that be part of Smash, like part of Smash Brothers, like Ultimate? No, that's that's impossible because the engine is built for 2D. So no, they couldn't they couldn't build a 3D engine within what they're doing in a two. No, no, that that wouldn't work. Uh uh-uh. uh no. It takes too much time. If you're trying to talk about building it within Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, then if you're talking about a whole separate game that's a 3D Smash Brothers game away from Ultimate, yeah, they could do that. They could maybe adjust or modify, but right now at this like build a 3D game into Smash Ultimate, no, they can't do that. No. Uh Danny Skelling. Shout out to Danny Skelling, man. Looking forward to our Smash session tomorrow. Says, do you think we could see an adapter to use SNES slash NES controllers on Switch once the virtual console games are out? Yeah, I think so. If you look at the my video that I did today, we talked about the data mine. It looks like there might be some support for some uh, some other types of controllers. So we'll have to wait and see. There's like there's like icons for like Super Nintendo and all that. So yeah, I think I think it's possible. I think it's possible. Mm-mm, mm-mm. What are your most memorable villains from JRPGs? Memorable villains. Um, Magus from Chrono Trigger until he joins you. But Magus is very memorable. Um, or you can, I mean, you can fight him. He can still be an enemy through you. I mean, you have the option. But Magus is probably my one of my most memorable villains in a JRPG. Um, i trying to think. Some other ones. I don't really know, man. Um, it just kind of dates... Uh, like Chrono, it always just kind of goes back to Chrono Trigger and like just like what what they do there. Like Lavos isn't that memorable, but it, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. There's a lot of memorable ones. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, he said, I mean, a 3D Smash uh, Arena fighter as a standalone. I I mean, they could do it, but I don't think they're going to. Smash Brothers is more of a it's a 2D game. I don't, I don't think they're going to do it. That, that'd take a whole different type of development atmosphere and time and stuff like that. Favorite video game protagonist? Uh, my favorite video game protagonist is probably... Uh, I, do it, I have no idea. I mean, 
it's tough to say who would be like protagonist. I mean, Chrono is obviously awesome. I love Chrono. Um, I love like Chrom, Lucina um, from Fire Emblem. Lucina might probably be like my top from Fire Emblem Awakening. I love that. I love uh, I love Rex, Rex, Pyra, Mithra. I love them. So yeah, there's a lot of cool protagonists, you know. So so yeah. You want a Nintendo Kart game? I I always see people asking for Nintendo Kart, but like why? Like what 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 makes Nintendo Kart like any better than what they would do? Is this like Mario Kart, Nintendo Kart? It's like Mario Kart characters don't have enough of like what do they do? Like all the game is about like the parts and the vehicles and the racing, and the, I mean I, I obviously like the locations that has a big effect, right? Like so if you have like a Legend of Zelda character, you can have a Legend of Zelda track, but I mean it's like. I can see that like, that'd be the only benefit that I can see is just having tracks from different, from different state, like different franchises. Uh, so yeah, that'd be the only benefit, but not actually having the characters themselves because <laughs> they don't do anything like Link's cool, but it's not like, oh my gosh, Link's in Legend is, or Link from Zelda's in, in Mario Kart. I mean, it's okay, but it's not like I'm still going to use my girl Peach. I'm still going to use Peach because Peach is the best. Peach is the best. Would you think of an animated Smash game, kind of like Dragon Ball Fighters, like a like the way that it's drawn or whatever? I mean, that doesn't matter. No, I don't think we need a Smash Brothers game like that. Smash Brothers is how. It, I mean, why do I want another game that plays just like Dragon Ball Fighters? But Smash, but like, I mean, it would, I would, I would buy it. But like Smash, I, I like I like Smash Brothers for how it is. Like I mean, I see people, a lot of people trying to say, oh, we'll change it to how Smash Brothers is. Like I want, there's no other games. Like there's very few games like Smash Brothers. There's a lot of games like Dragon Ball Fighters. Like there are a bunch of games like Persona 4 Arena, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. There's like a ton of games that they make that are like Dragon Ball Fighters. You know, with with different tweaks. I mean, I, Smash Brothers is is Smash Brothers, and I kind of want Smash Brothers to stay that way. Uh, you know, I don't I don't want a you know a bunch of imitations of what they're doing there with Smash with Nintendo Kids. That's just me though. Um, yeah, I don't even want to fire. I would like like a Naruto fighters. That would be good because you're taking a franchise that hasn't had a good fighting game in a long time and then making it into a good franchise. So like, give me a Naruto fighters over a uh, Smash fighters because we already have a good franchise with Smash. Smash is, in my opinion, Smash is much better than Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, you know, in, in my opinion. Uh, so, but the Naruto fighting games are nowhere near as good as Dragon Ball Fighters. So I think that if they take Naruto and put that in there, I would be completely down for that completely down for that all right take it easy sean diamond thanks for coming out to the stream man j2 blue says in terms of art style for 2d do you prefer 16 or or 8 8 bit or 16 bit messenger or hand-drawn art style hollow knight uh i don't know if i have a preference to be honest man whatever they decide to do it's good for the game it's good are there any spy games you would like um like sly cooper or something like that or like metal gear yeah, those games are cool. Bring them back. Smash Warriors spinoff from Koei Tecmo. <laughs> yeah, man. The Taki teacher showing off the emotes. Let's go. Oh, like 007. Oh, like, oh, like a like a like a spy, not like like a stealth, but like a spy game. Oh, okay, I see. I see what you're trying to say. Oh, like like a secret agent type of game. Yeah, when I was a kid, man, um, 007 was big, dude. 007 games were huge when I was a kid. Uh, GoldenEye was obviously the, the one that everybody first got into uh, was GoldenEye, so we loved that. And then there was, like, Perfect Dark. Um, so we're like, Joanna Dark, she's kind of like a spy, a intelligence agent. Um, and then there was, like, uh, like, I played, like, 007, like, Nightfire on the GameCube. I really liked that game. So I used to play 007 games quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I would love I would love for there to be a 007 game. Absolutely. Um, in my opinion, yeah, the Boise either World Ends with you is worth fifty dollars. There's enough content in there. It's a really it's a really good game. I like I like the World Ends with you, but that's just my opinion. Most people who've played the game say that they really like it though. It's it's got really good reviews too. Mission Impossible. I think was wasn't there like, there there was a Mission Impossible game that was halfway decent, wasn't there? Like on the PS2, I'm pretty sure there was a Mission Impossible game that was actually it wasn't horrible, from what I remember. Am I am I correct about that, guys? About a Mission Impossible game on the PS2 that was actually somewhat good. Nightfire remake, I'd be down for that. 
the N64 Mission Impossible? No, no, I don't think it, I think it was it was definitely like a gen it was it was like a gen 6 Mission Impossible game. I never played the N64 Mission Impossible. I heard the latest Mission Impossible or the the Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise. I heard that that's like the best one ever made. Is that true, guys? The latest Mission Impossible movie is like really 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 good. It's like the best one. Or like one of the best ones cuz there's like a million of them. I just heard that it was really good. Oh yeah, there's Mission Impossible games. Absolutely there's Mission Impossible games. KG says it was really good. Bro, yeah, yes, okay. Player since it's the best one, okay. Yeah, it was absolutely pretty uh, pretty awesome. Tom Cruise creeps me out. Yeah, the guy that he's like jumping on Oprah's couch. Something like that. For apparently I mean, from what I've seen in the previews, it looks really good. It look I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it at some point. K19, French fam, what's up, man? How's it going? Yeah, the guy does his own stunts. Yeah, that's true, though. And the stunts in those movies are crazy. Those are some crazy stunts. The N64 game was based on the first Mission Impossible. Okay, but I could have swore, guys. Okay, now we got to look. Now, see, now I'm interested because now, now we got to look this up, dude. Because... Okay, so we have, oh yeah, I think you guys are right. We have Mission Impossible, um, Mission Impossible, Operation, oh, okay, Operation Surma. It's an action, it's an action adventure video game developed by Paradigm Entertainment and published by Atari Inc. for the Game Boy Advance, Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. So who's played that game? Who's played that game? Let me see here. Uh, it was it got mixed or average reviews on all platforms, but the Game Boy Advance version, which received generally unfavorable reviews according to video game aggregator Metacritic. Okay, so so yeah, it looks like it didn't get the best reviews out there. The highest review here, okay, IGN. What's I, IGN gave it a seven point three out of ten. The highest score here for the game is OXM US, and they gave it a four an eight point four. The Metacritic is uh, a sixty. The highest is a sixty-seven on the Xbox. So yeah, it's not a very good. It's not, apparently it's not a good game. Um, okay, so then you have Mission Impossible, um, the video game, just from Ultra, and then you have Mission Impossible nineteen ninety eight, and that was on the N sixty four. So I think that's one. Okay, expect the impossible. Okay, that's one that you guys are talking about. Is, is apparently the good one. Okay, so Metacritic, it actually has a worse ranking. So Metacritic, it has a 61 out of 100. And Game Rankings has a 71 out of 100 for its average reviews. But however, there are some okay reviews. IGN gives it a 6.6 out of 10. But uh, Game Informer gave it an 8 out of 10. Game Revolution gave it a B-. minus. So it's got some bad reviews. It's got some good reviews. It's got some pretty horrible ones, so... It was considered a commercial success, though. They said that it sold over 1.3 million copies. So, that's good. Um, get it and live stream it. Live stream what? What, Mission Impossible? And then there's, this is, this is the uh, Mission Impossible in 2000. For the, okay, yeah, it's the same one, but only for, it, they just made it for the Game Boy. That's all it is. Yeah. Made it for the Game Boy. Uh, what are some Sega franchises you'd like to see come back? Skies of Arcadia. That's the only one that needs to come back is Skies of Arcadia. Uh, yeah, I saw what the Sony CEO said, <coughs> Boise, um, about PlayStation is the best place. The reason why they, they're not doing crossplay because PlayStation is the best place to uh, play Fortnite. Yeah, that's that's a bunch of BS. Uh, but you know, uh, that's what he says. That's what he says. I mean. They're not. Uh, they're not. They're not um, faltering on that. They so. So yeah, but um, 
Hellion bro, what do you mean? What game do you want me to live stream? What game were you talking about? Hellion bro. The next stream that we have uh, for like a single player game is going to be Dragon Quest XI. That's going to be the next stream. Yeah, be more. It is. It's. It's not even a tad arrogant. It's very arrogant. It's not about the best place to play. Like it's about giving your users the best experience, and giving users the best experience is giving them the most options, and giving them the most options is letting them play when everybody else is playing against each other. You say that you can't. Like that. That's stupid. Giving them more options is not making it. It's not the best place. Like that's no. That's not true. So. I said, oh, oh, you were joking. You never played any of the Mission Impossible games? Yeah, I don't have any of them, so I don't know how I would stream it. So and They're all on old systems. Um, although, I think you guys would probably watch that, right? Uh, I'd love to stream with you, but I live in NYC, so we have to set up a time. Stream with me? What do you mean by stream with me? MFS gameplay? Wait, I don't know what you mean by that. Be more Kumis is very thick and obvious sarcasm. Of him. From from where, Be more? What, what, what do you talk about? I forgot what you talk about. Uh oh oh okay when you said that oh like Sony is a tad uh okay yeah yeah that's true yeah sarcasm definitely definitely <laughs> what about Fantasy Star uh yeah I would like Fantasy Star to come back yeah Fantasy Star would be great like the regular Fantasy Star um yeah i mean i'm not sure um fs gameplay uh really when i do my live streams with multiple users like you know i like to you know uh do my live streams like kind of like on my own um and i i, I do my uh my subs and all that but uh I like my, my patreons or my um members but uh, well i mean we'll see maybe i'm not i'm not really sure I, I can't i can't guarantee that i'll live stream with you especially right now and i don't i don't know i gotta see your channel and all that um, hi, bro. Ninety one says player since. Oh boy. Uh, but oh, oh. By the way, uh, since we were talking about Sony, uh, what is the latest on the Spidey downgrade? Oh, there's not really much, man. I, I don't. I mean, it's just there's a Spidey downgrade. There's. <laughs> I mean, that's really. It. Um, but everyone still says that the game is awesome. The game is fun to play. So I mean, I don't think that's really going to be really, you know, anything that's going to hurt the game in general because the game is still really good looking. It's still a really great game. So yeah. Boise says, "Player, since uh, the Sony uh, Sony fans at school made fun of me for owning a Switch and a PS4 and a PS4, then one day a person who had an Xbox came up to me and asked to play Fortnite. And we played together, and enjoyed it. Oh, you must be young. You're in school. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why somebody would make fun of you for having a Switch and a PS4. That doesn't make sense. Like you have more than them, and they're laughing at you for having less." I don't know kids these days, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not done with the kids. I don't know how. I don't know how you guys are conversating at school. I'm just the just the dude making videos online. They're back to their PS pre PS3 behavior. Uh, they got a little bit of PS3 pre pre PS3 swagger to them. Yeah, I agree. What about PS5? Is oh, I know Jetty Plus. I know why we can't record from. From Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Because they don't want any spoilers out on there. From like people to post spoilers everywhere. That's the reason why. Otherwise they would have had it in there. It's still silly though. Because people can still just use capture cards. But How long are we going to be waiting for a Dragon Quest port on the Switch? Um, I'd probably say it's going to come out like early 2019. Like first quarter 2019. <laughs> Oh, typical eighth graders. Oh, wow, you're really young then, man. Eighth grade. Yeah, dude, I have no idea what eighth graders would say. I would say, man, listen, when I was in high school, like, people only knew of me because I played sports. When the sports season was over, people didn't care about what I had to say unless it was like my friends. So um, hang on to the people that are your friends, the people who aren't aren't rocking with you, then you don't got to pay attention to them, you know. Um, when you're an adult, People that people that aren't rocking you, aren't rocking with you, that aren't don't have your back, you, they, you don't need them in your life. Um, when you're in business, people that aren't helping you make money, or if they're not helping you further your brand, or if they're not helping you um, create content, or being a positive outlook in your life, they gotta go. And that's kind of how I am in my life right now. You know what I'm saying? You guys are cool. You guys are here. You guys help me out, and even. In, you guys are in the chat. You guys are asking questions. This is content. People are happy because they're getting their questions answered. We can keep the conversation going. 
It helps me with my, you know, have content for my business. So I'm rocking with all you guys. People who aren't trying to rock with me, aren't trying to trying to troll, trying to do stupid stuff. They got to go. That's pretty much how it is, man. So I would just say this for your situation. If they're not there to enhance like right now, you, you, you know, you're in school. So you're not trying to, you know, you're not in the same situation as me. But if they're not there to make your life better, if they're not there to help you, you know, whether it's be happy, which is with gaming or whatever, then they got to go. Then you don't talk to them no more, man. Plain and simple. Then you, you, don't, you don't talk to them no more. If they come up to you, don't waste your time. That's the one thing that I'll say to all the kids in the chat here. Don't waste your uh, don't worry about what I do because I, 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 I work from home. OK, but I'm telling you guys, since you guys have, you know, you guys are school, you know, dating, whatever kids do these days. You know what I'm saying? Don't waste your time with people that aren't trying to rock with you because you're going to end up wasting your time. You're not going to you're going to end up feeling bad because when you're a kid, you're still emotional in certain states. Don't waste your time with people that aren't trying to help you. You know what I'm saying? Or aren't trying to, you know, promote your happiness. So. So, yeah, that's what I would say. That's my advice. Um, back in my day, we had computers. Screw you. <laughs> I had computers when I was a kid. Stop it. They just were really blocky looking and ran DOS. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, has there ever been an open world Ninja Gaiden? Uh, no, there's been, there has never been an open world Ninja Gaiden. Um, hey, it's all good, man. Don't worry about that right now, Boy Z, man. Just worry about... And First of all, you're young. You know what I'm saying? First of all, you're young. So just worry about enjoying... Enjoy your youth you're less than 13 years old enjoy that's my biggest thing to kids enjoy your youth enjoy your uh you know and just joy being a kid because when you do get a job and when you do grow up trust me it's not what it's cracked up to be trust me when i was a kid i wanted to grow up so fast now that i'm a grown-up i do anything i would i would i would do nearly anything to go back in time and let me just relive some of my childhood. I do anything, even my even some of the awkward years. I do anything to do it. So enjoy your youth, enjoy your childhood, have a childhood, uh, be a kid, you know. And uh, you you there's plenty of you'll be working for a long time, man. You'll be working and making money and spending money for a long time, dude. So heck, dude, I'm like I'm only barely. A, Barely turned him, got into my 30s, and I'm just like, oh, I gotta work for another 20, 30 years. I gotta work, you know? <laughs> and I just got my career going doing this. So you got a long time to work, man. Enjoy, enjoy your enjoy your life. Enjoy your 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 youth before it's gone. <laughs> oh man. Um, you got mail. Yeah, AOL, man. That was my high school days, dude. AOL. Net zero. Net zero and AOL, dude. <laughs> Net zero and AOL, man. <laughs> Retro assets. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so where are we at on time? All right, guys, we're hitting pretty much the three three hour mark. We're going to go ahead and stop it right here. So uh, pretty much in terms of content, guys, tomorrow might be a little bit light. I'll probably have a video for you guys. We'll do a live stream and then, of course, the Spawncast tomorrow. So look forward to that. So we'll, you'll probably have a video at some point. You'll have a live stream for Smash Brothers. I'll be playing Smash. Uh, so Patreon sponsors, you guys can get in on that. I'll have a post tomorrow. Um, and like I said, I'll have a video and then the spawn cast uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. PT. That is 9 p.m. Eastern time. If you haven't checked out my Smash Brothers video, please do so. I'm going to link you guys some videos and then we're also going to raid somebody as well. So look out for a raid. We're, we're going we're gonna to raid very soon here, guys. Um, but I'm going to link you guys my Smash Brothers video and also my giveaway as well. Um, can I get a mod to type in the command that I give away command? Um, we're going to we're going to have that. So if you haven't entered my, my giveaway, make sure you enter that in. Um, and also my Smash Brothers video, it'd be really nice if you guys uh, shared the video. Like if you have Twitter or social media, share the video. I think it's a pretty good video. It was my top video for the day. Got the most views. So thank you guys for watching the video. Um, and uh, so you guys can check that out. Check out some of my firmware videos that I did as well. Um, I did some of those firmware videos. Those did pretty good this week too. So check those out. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and let's rate somebody. Somebody said Avadon is streaming. Um, I, I think I just rated Avadon. Um, so let me see if there's anybody else that I haven't rated this week streaming. Um, 
Oh yeah, Abaddon's doing his Abaddon Direct. Abaddon Direct is going on right now. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and give him a good raid right now, man. Uh let's go ahead and give him a good a good You know what? Actually, here's the thing. We'll do Abaddon and we'll do we'll do Switch Station. Because my boy Switch Station, he's also streaming. He's also streaming as well. So let's go ahead and let's do let's do Abaddon and let's do Switch Station. Because they're both they're both streaming. So you guys check it out there. Um there's Avadons. I think actually no, that might have not been it. Never mind. Uh, that well, somebody linked Avadon's channel, so we'll do that, and we'll also do Switch Station as well. So let me go in and get Switch Station's uh, his channel, and because he only has he only has one one person uh, one person watching him, so it'd be really nice if you guys went over there um, and helped out Switch Station. Um, so here's his, here's Switch Station. He's playing Octopath. He's on Chapter 2. So make sure you guys check him out, you know, as well. I'll let him know that player hasn't sent you guys over there. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. Nice three-hour stream. A lot of fun. Um, he's also doing a $50 eShop giveaway. The $50 eShop giveaway with Switch Station. So check that out. So you guys go over to Switch Station's channel. Go over to Avedon's channel. Let him know that we sent you. And uh, we will see you guys for the next one tomorrow. Smash Brothers tomorrow live stream. And also um, normal videos and the spawn cast tomorrow for content. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys for the next one. Peace.